Okay, welcome everyone to the January 18th, 2022 regular meeting of the San Francisco Elections Commission. I'm the president, Chris Trudonik. The time is now 6.07 p.m. and I call the meeting to order. This meeting is being held in person at City Hall, room 408, one director Carlton B. Goodlett Place, San Francisco, California, as authorized by California Government Code Section 54953E and Mayor Breed's 45th supplement to her February 25th, 2020 emergency proclamation. It is possible that some members of the Elections Commission may attend this meeting remotely. In that event, those members will participate and vote by video. Members of the public may attend the meeting to observe and provide public comment at the physical meeting location listed above or online. In addition to participating in real time, interested persons are encouraged to participate in this meeting by submitting public comment in writing by noon on the day of the meeting to Chris.Jerdonik, J E R D O N E K, at sfgov.org. It will be shared with the Commission after this meeting has concluded and will be included as part of the official meeting file. Public comment will be available on each item on this agenda. Each member of the public will be allowed three minutes to speak. Opportunities to speak during the public comment period are available via phone by calling 1 415 655 0001. Again, the phone number is 1-415-655-0001. Access code 249-005-89640. Again, 249-005-89640. And then following typing in the access code, you press pound and then press pound again to join as an attendee. You will hear a beep when you are connected to the meeting. You will be automatically muted and in listening mode only. When your item of interest comes up, dial star three to raise your hand to be added to the public comment line. You will then hear, you have raised your hand to ask a question. Please wait until the host calls on you. The line will be silent as you wait your turn to speak. Ensure you are in a quiet location. Before you speak, mute the sound of any equipment around you, including television, radio, or computer. It is especially important that you mute your computer if you're watching via the web link to prevent feedback and echo when you speak. When the system message says your line has been unmuted, it is your turn to speak. You are encouraged to state your name clearly. As soon as you begin speaking, you have three minutes to provide your public comment, six minutes if you're on the line with an interpreter. You will hear a bell go off when you have 30 seconds remaining. If you change your mind and wish to withdraw yourself from the public comment line, press star three again. You'll hear the system say you have lowered your hand. When a phone is not available, you can use your computer web browser. Make sure the participant side panel is showing by clicking on the participants icon. Make sure the participants panel is expanded in the side panel by pressing the small arrow indicator in the panel. You should see a list of panelists followed by a list of attendees. At the bottom of the list of attendees is a small button or icon that looks like a hand. Press the hand icon to raise your hand. You'll be unmuted when it is time for you to comment. When you're done with your comment, click the hand icon again to lower your hand. When your three minutes has expired, staff will thank you and you'll be muted. You will hear your line has been muted. Public comment instructions are also listed on, on the final page of the agenda. Okay, um, commissioners, um, please make sure your microphone is unmuted so that you can state your presence at today's meeting after your name is called. So we will uh, proceed with the Roll call attendance. Uh, Vice President Stone. Present. Commissioner Bernholtz. Here. Commissioner Dye. Here. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Here. Commissioner Lavolsi. Present. Commissioner Parker. Here. And I, Commissioner Drudonic, am here. So we have everyone in attendance. We have a quorum. Okay, so um, next under agenda item number one. So a member of the commission will state the uh, our land acknowledgement, and I've asked uh, Commissioner Hayden Crowley to say the land acknowledgement for today. Mr. Hayden Crowley. Thank you, President Jordanic. The San Francisco Elections Commission acknowledges that we are on the unceded ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone Ohlone, who are the original inhabitants of the San Francisco Peninsula. As the indigenous stewards of this land and in accordance with their traditions, the Ramatush Ohlone have never ceded, lost, nor forgotten their responsibilities as caretakers of this place. 
as well as for all peoples who reside in their traditional territory. As guests, we recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland. We wish to pay our respects by acknowledging the ancestors and relatives of the Ramatush community and affirming their sovereign rights as first peoples. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. And then next, we have another announcement. I'd like to welcome new Commissioner Michelle Parker, who was sworn in um, yesterday, January 17th, and was appointed by the Board of Education. And Commissioner Parker, would you like to say a few words about yourself? Sure. Um, thank you, President Jordanic. Um, yes, I was just appointed yesterday. I'm really excited for the opportunity to serve San Francisco. Um, I have been lived here in the city for about 25 years. I have three children who I've, were born here and have gone through our public schools here in the city, and I've been very active in our public education community over all of this time, served in a lot of different leadership roles, chairing different committees for the school district oversight committees and at the state level with the State Department of Education. Um, I've been a long time advocate for civic uh, civic engagement and helping to encourage families all over our city to do that. Um, professionally, I work as the executive director of education for KQED, our public media station here in the city. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so now we will move on to agenda item number two, general public comment. Public comment on any issue within the Elections Commission's general jurisdiction that is not covered by another item on this agenda. And then Vice President Stone is going to be manning the microphones like, uh, like last time. Yes, um, we have one person on the line. Mr. Turner, I'm going to unmute you and um, just submit the request and then you will have three minutes. I've unmuted you. Can you hear me? Yes, if you could project a little bit, that would be helpful. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, uh, welcome to uh, new Commissioner Parker, and um, I, I also wanted to uh, apologize um, for my mispronunciation uh, of one of the Commissioner's names uh, previous. Uh, uh, I thought I heard Woolsey, but I did not, and so my apologies. Um, uh, just uh, by way of reference, uh, I've been working in the open source voting system space as an advocate. I'm an election analyst. And I worked with Christine Pelosi, uh, Speaker uh, Pelosi's daughter, um, putting open source software into the California State Democratic Party platform. Um, so, uh, by by way of reference, again, I've I've worked with the reason I thought I heard Woolsey was uh, I worked with uh, Jim Woolsey, the former director of the CIA, and we were in a movie together called The Real Activist, which I think. Uh, some uh, political figures in San Francisco are in as well, if you get a chance to see it. Um, let us remember that it is true that the best practices for mission critical systems include open source for the Department of Defense, NASA, the Air Force, etc. Th this esteemed commission has led the state and country on the issue of open source voting, and we applaud your efforts and hope they continue. Uh, open source paper ballot systems are now available for piloting in San Francisco, and New Hampshire just had a successful pilot. Uh, and now they've joined Mississippi, interestingly ahead of California, in the pursuit for uh, higher level technology for elections. So we, we hope the commission takes all necessary steps to expedite open source moving forward. We know we've had some blocks on the political side uh, Aaron Peskin uh, has, has not been uh, our ally on this. However, the board of uh, supervisors historically has passed 11 to 0 um, all motions toward directing uh, John Ernst and the department to move toward open source systems. So this battle has been going on for about 15 years now, and we're just hoping that this Commission continues the effort. It's a very difficult effort. It is the third rail of politics, but we 30 seconds for your, for your previous efforts and look forward to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I have, I have muted you um, and 
I will lower your hand. Call in user three. Um, I have just requested to unmute you. Um, I will, uh, you have three minutes when, after you begin. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I just want to call in at the um, outset of a new commission. Welcome new commissioner Parker. I'm happy to hear that you have experience in the commission realm. Um, I want to kind of talk about how the elections commission in San Francisco seems to be dominated by a, a single issue discussion about open source voting. And while I think that is a valuable um, point, I think some of the advocates who are given a huge amount of um, space and time to, to speak on almost every agenda item uh, really are, are, are causing some serious doubt about the security of elections, um, both in San Francisco and recently in Alameda. I saw an uh, interview with Mr. Brett Turner uh, as he was discussing the Alameda issue with ranked choice voting, and he's essentially insinuating that Dominion is not a secure system and that people are pulling the levers behind the scenes. Uh, this is a really dangerous allegation for someone to be given the, the space to make because, as we saw this week in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, there was a targeted attack on, on people based on false claims of election fraud. So I just want to, you know, uh, advise this commission as it goes into the new year to really kind of accept that open source is one thing, but it is not the only thing. And it is not, um, it, it, it's just not the answer to all the problems. And it's really dangerous both in, in so many ways to insinuate and listen to this um, idea that Dominion is doing something bad or any other system that's not open source is a danger. Um, I would also, hope that the commission can look to maybe different leadership this time around as the uh, the, the commission uh, was was not getting the best attention uh, nationwide and internationally in the last session. So please consider those things as we look toward a productive uh, future. Thank you. Thank you. I've unmuted or I've muted you and we have no more um, hands raised. Okay, so uh, next item, agenda item number three, discussion, possible action, resolution on continuation of remote elections commission meetings. So we have our usual two packet items. We have the memo from the city attorney and also the, the proposed resolution. I move we adopt the resolution. Second. Okay, is there any commissioner discussion before we take public comment? Okay, seeing none, let's take public comment. We have no hands raised. Okay, any further discussion before we take a vote? Okay, seeing none. Um, Vice President Stone? Yes. Commissioner Bernholtz? Yes. Commissioner Dye? Aye. Commissioner Hayden Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Lavolsi? Yes. Commissioner Parker? Yes. And I, President Jordanic, vote yes. So the motion passes unanimously. Okay, so let's move on to agenda item number four, election of commission executive officers. Discussion possible action to elect a new commission president and vice president per commission bylaws article five, section one B. The procedure will be as follows. The chair of the meeting will open nominations for president. Any commissioner who wishes to nominate a candidate will state the name of that person. If that person agrees to run, then that person is nominated. When there are no further nominations, the chair will close the nominations and call a roll call vote in which each commissioner shall state the name of the nominee for whom he or she is voting. If a nominee receives four or more votes, that person is elected president. If no nominee receives four votes, the commission may have further discussion and proceed to another vote. This process shall repeat until one nominee has received four or more votes. The same process will then be used to elect a vice president. And then per the bylaws, the terms shall begin immediately at the conclusion of the meeting. Okay, so let's start with the um, 
opening the nominations for president? I'd like to make a nomination. Um, well, let's, Commissioner Brown, I'm just going to go to Commissioner Hayden Crowley first, and then I'll go to you next. Yep. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Thank you. Um, I'd like to nominate Vice President Stone as our next president. I think that she's done an, a great job in uh, ex in um, facilitating uh, uh, and building a, a new relationship with our executive director, and I would like to see us headed more in that direction where we're working closely together as the year goes on. And so I think that uh, Commissioner Stone would bring that experience and commitment to that position. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Um, do you accept the nomination? Yes, and thank you. Okay, so we have one nomination. Uh, Commissioner Bernholtz? That was my nomination, so no need. Thank you. Okay. So are there any other um, nominations for president? Okay, seeing none. So I will close the nominations and we'll call a roll call vote. And, you know, as the instructions say, just state the name of the nominee who, for whom you are voting. Okay, so let's um, go through Vice President Stone. Commissioner Stone. Commissioner Bernholtz. Commissioner Stone. Commissioner Dye. Commissioner Stone. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Commissioner Stone. Commissioner Lavolsi. Commissioner Stone. Commissioner Parker. Commissioner Stone. And I also vote for Commissioner Stone or Vice President Stone. Thank you. Okay, so Vice President Stone, you are elected president. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hope I can make you all proud. Okay, so so next we proceed to Vice President. So if anyone would like to nominate a candidate for vice president, you just state the name of that person. I'd like to make a nomination. Okay. Uh, I'd like to nominate Commissioner Hayden Crowley for vice president. Okay, Commissioner Hayden Crowley, do you accept the nomination? Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. So are there any other nominations? I, I would actually like to nominate myself for vice president. Um, and let me just explain why. I, I served as president for the past six months and I was very happy to serve. There's a lot of things that we're working on and um, we're very busy, but I would like the opportunity to you know, continue the work that I started and supporting vice president Stone, now president Stone. And um, there are kind of a number of initiatives that I would kind of like to continue handing over to her. I, I agree. Um, I, I, sorry, this is, uh, I guess, President elect Stone. Uh, I, I think everyone would be, I think Commissioner Hayden Crowley, Crowley would be phenomenal. I also support, um, but I support like President Jordanic um, because President I'm President elect, he's President. Um, because one of the things that I think would be valuable is continuity and stability. Um, I know it's been a pretty challenging several months um, and because um, President Jordanic only did serve for six months, I do believe that we, while there has been a lot of turmoil, I do believe we've built very good rapport um, in our ability to have conversation and um, yeah, I think we work well together. I that is not anything about Commissioner Crow, uh, Hayden Crowley. It's just in support of um, what President Jordanic has already shared. Okay, is there any other um, discussion? Actually, I also realized. Um, Deputy State Attorney Flores, I forgot to take public comment before the first vote, so I'm not sure what we should do for that.
Okay, well, I guess what I'll do is I'll take public comment before our next vote, but um, I, I'll just take public comment right now, actually. Do we have to do it before the vote? Well, that was my understanding, but um, but I'm hearing differently from even though it's not a motion. Yes. Yes. Okay. Business per se is just that we've established for my I'm also being told by um, someone that uh, the public is unable to hear you, uh, DCA Flores. All right. Just to provide the public a little bit of um, intel as to what we were just talking about, it we are discussing when we should take public comment. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if, yeah, it, you've already done the president um, nomination and acceptance, um, so I, I think at this point, if you wanna take public comment now, um, you know, it, it's just, you're following the bylaws. It's, you're not, you know, uh, building new policies or, or anything that the, you know, that the public's gonna have, you know, uproar about. So um, I think that at any point that you wanna take public comment on this item, you should only do it once. Um, so if, if you want to take public comment now, I think it would be appropriate. Yeah, I, I would just, just out of caution, I'd like to take public comment now. Um, even if we're technically allowed to do it at the end, but um, okay. so let's open it up to public comment. I'm unable to see. Bear, bear with me for one moment. We're having some technical difficulty. I'll move the window around. Are you able to are you able to navigate it and I'll just do the timer? Um, well, I think so. Okay, I see one public commenter on the on the phone. I'm gonna unmute you. This, this is Mr. Turner. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, no uproar from the public on anything that I can sense so, thus far. Um, just wanted to um, put in a good acknowledgement for President Stone. I think she'll be able to carry forward with the good work of uh, President Jordanic, uh, now President elect Stone. And uh, also to say that. Commissioner Hayden Crowley, I'm sure, can get up to speed very quickly. Um, there is a tremendous amount of volume um, here, and so that is applauded by the public as well. Um, one thing I did want to mention was, since it was mentioned that there has been a lot of turmoil with the international press and, and such, um, the public feels as though that was a bad uh, press moment where the press was actually off kilter and reported some things that weren't necessarily true. And that was then exploited uh, by everyone from Tucker Carlson on down the line. So that's actually a, a badge of honor for this commission to take fire from the, the hard right like that. And um, again, your efforts are all appreciated. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Turner. You are now unmuted and lowered your hand. As of now, I don't see additional hands raised. Okay, so is there any further discussion before we take a vote? Oh, please go. Okay, yeah. so 
other oh, questions. Commissioner Dye. Um, so I think both of you would be fabulous, but I'm just, I just have a question for Commissioner Hayden Crawley. Uh, I, I think that, you know, we have an opportunity to kind of um, institute some good processes and structure for the Elections Commission, and I think that will take some extra effort by our leadership, and I'm just wondering if you're up for that because you had some, you've expressed concern about the amount of time maybe that this has taken, and I'm just curious. Well, I wouldn't have, ex uh, thank you. Uh, it's com I should be waiting to be recognized, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. It's Commissioner Hayden Crowley. I would not have accepted if I wasn't up for the challenge. Um, but that being said, um, what I was kind of actually hesitant is I wanted to see if there were other people that were interested in the process, because I'm not sure I would have accepted if I had seen that there were other people. Um, I'll just be candid. Um, I'm willing to do whatever it takes um, because I made a commitment when I um, agreed to serve on the commission. But um, I understand if um, uh, that President Jordanic has perhaps a longer term commitment to the commission than I bring to the table as I've only been on the commission since October. But um, I would, as I said, I would not have accepted if um, I wasn't willing to do the work. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Vice President Stone. Yes, thank you. Um, this is um, Vice President Stone. I um, appreciate that question that was previously um, presented to um, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. I think I'd like to hear from the um, body in terms of folks who uh, uh, did not nominate um, and what your priorities are, um, because I just, to share a little bit of context about what I think is important, um, if it's helpful, is, uh, and I mentioned this a little bit, is I think there are a couple of things that are important. One is uh, trust um, and trust with the commission, trust with the department, trust with the public um, and government. Um, and I think being able to build support uh, for the work that we do is crucial. Um, and the other part of that is I think just kind of building some stability. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean specific individuals, that's just how do we make this commission operate in the best possible way um, for the long term? And that goes side by side with trust. And so I'd like to understand how the body, members of the body feel um, as it pertains to the two nominees in um, their ability to do those two things um, and, and um, yeah, to follow through on those. Um, I. I recognize that that's a little bit untraditional, so um, I understand if that's not uh, folks' interest, but that is an interest of mine, so thank you. Um, any, any commenters or? Uh, Mr. Hayden Crowley? Yeah, at this point, because of your strong desire to be vice president, I'm going to withdraw my nomination uh, because I will look to serve at another time when I have more experience on the commission, but know that I'm willing to serve and I would not have accepted had, um, uh, had I not been willing to make that commitment. But knowing that your commitment has a longer history, I cede to you. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Okay, so is there anyone else? Okay, so let's proceed to a vote. And just as a reminder, just state the name of the nominee for whom you are voting. Uh, Vice President Stone. Um, uh, President Jordan, or Commissioner Jordanic. Uh, Commissioner Bernholtz. Commissioner Jordanic. Commissioner Dye. Commissioner Jordanic. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Commissioner Jordanic. 
Commissioner Lavolsi. Commissioner Jordanic. Commissioner Parker. Commissioner Jordanic. And I vote for Commissioner Jordanic as well. Okay, so that um, so that means I'm elected vice president. So um, um, so thank you, everybody. So just as a reminder, for the bylaws, the, these terms will begin immediately at the conclusion of the meeting. Okay. So um, let's move on to item number five, redistricting process initiative. Discussion possible action regarding the commission's potential recommendations with respect to the San Francisco redistricting process, including historical background and the proposed project plan. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over to commissioners Dye and Lavolsi. And we had begun discussing this at the last meeting and it's continuing today. Thank you, President Jordanic. So um, you have in the packet the exact same document that was in the packet for the December meeting. And what I was hoping for was just a little feedback from the rest of the commission. Uh, this was intended to be kind of an executive summary of um, all of the recommendations that we heard from our various speakers for the past six months. Um, you know, uh, some of them were overwhelming in their recommendations and, you know, others only, so, you know, chose to comment on selected aspects. But uh, what I wanted to know is, is there a desire by the commission to have a couple of more educational sessions to do deep dives on some of these uh, different aspects so that we can set up additional experts to come uh, and address the commission um, some of the things that, um, you know, kind of, uh, I wondered if the rest of the commission wanted to spend a little more time talking about are, for example, um, the rank criteria in the Fair Maps Act and, you know, uh, what some of those different criteria mean, for example, um, or does everyone feel pretty comfortable with these different aspects? And would we be ready to start soliciting proposals from the public on what they'd like to see for San Francisco? Okay, so Commissioner Bernholtz has a comment. Thank you, uh, President Tredonic, and thank you, Commissioners Stai and Lavolsi, um, for all of the work you've put into this so far. I spent a fair amount of time with this document and um, I'm very impressed with the synthesis, that, the synthesis that you've been able to do. I do, and I agree with many of these recommendations. Um, I guess if there's a topic that I would need more information on um, before moving forward are, um, they, they don't have numbers, so uh, the one that headline transparency and the one that's headlined uh, selection criteria and process. Um, I'm, it's unclear to me from all of the uh, people we've heard from on the selection criteria and process, uh, how, what that application process winds up looking like, what the impact on the commission would be, and how uh, bans on conflicts of interest are um, determined and enforced. So that's one area. And then number, the second one under transparency, I think this is um, a, a very good set of recommendations. What I'm not sure are, um, wait, maybe it wasn't transparency. I'm sorry, I think I've got the wrong thing. So oh, um, the ban on ex parte communications and required disclosure, um, also just sort of questions the, uh, about enforcement of that and how that's actually carried forward. So um, other than that, I, I, the only other overarching question I have, which would be, I believe, appropriate for whatever discussions you're planning for the full commission is where, if anywhere, there are recommendations that are um, mutually exclusive contained within here or that have implications to some recommendations of implications for others. And I wasn't able to quite figure that out on my own. So that might be just a 
part of the next conversation we have. But again, I want to thank you for the amount of work that went into this. And if there's any more detail to be gathered on those two questions, that's where my interest lies. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Bernholtz. Anyone else? Commissioner Hayden. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Um, thank you, President Jordanik, and thank you both um, Commissioner Dye and Commissioner Lavolsi. I concur with um, Commissioner Bernholtz on the tremendous amount of work that you've done and the thought that you've put into this, and of course, all of the input that we've received from the public, which I haven't even been privy to all of it since I was late to the game. But again, I come back to sort of a practical assessment at the end, and there's a few things that I would do right away is I think you could sure you could have more meetings, you could get more ideas and so forth. But I think if this is to move forward, you need to get somebody to write it. And typically that would be the city attorney's office, but I don't know if that's something that this commission does, but it's kind of like, you gotta, you gotta throw it up against the wall and see what sticks. And I do think uh, you 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 need to move forward on it, and 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 that's the time to get the input is once you have a draft, because you've got lots of ideas here, and we could collect ideas till kingdom come. I mean, I thought the stipend part isn't in here. There's a few other things, but who cares? What you need is somebody to write this for you, and then see what sticks, and then we would get the public input on that document. The second part of that is, and I think it is it, it is uh, crucial, is uh, that uh, uh, concurrent with doing that, and you get the public input and so forth, is you're building a coalition with the public to a certain extent you've already done that. Because I, well, regardless of what this commission votes on it, I don't think the commission's the one that should be lobbying for this at the board level, trying to get that support. Unfortunately, we, we, right now, I don't know how much standing we have with the board. So I think that um, if this is something that we, you know, because already a tremendous amount of time and thought and energy has been put into this. And um, I, I think that uh, for our best bet, we need to find key people who are invested in this, but also have strong relationships with members of the board and with the mayor's office to put this forth, to, to make this go forward. Um, because those are the folks that the board and the mayor will listen to. And without them, if it's us, it's, it's I'm sorry, it's DOA. It, it just is. I mean, we, we need to be smart and strategic about this if you want this to go forward. So um, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hayden Crawley. Always appreciate your pragmatic approach. Um, just to give you kind of what our thinking is on this right now, because we are not, um, uh, I mean, this is something that will be voted on by, by people. So hopefully we get the Board of Supervisors and hopefully the mayor too to put this on the ballot. Um, what I think our appropriate role is, is that we would endorse um, you know, a set of recommendations and bless it. Um, but I think the responsibility of not doing it um, should actually come from the public. And so, uh, and, and I have expressed that to the folks who have a vested interest in this and, and were very upset with the last process and they are taking the ball and running with it. Um, so the expectation is that, you know, when we're done with our educational staff, which might just be 1 or 2 more sessions. That we would have a public hearing and invite proposals from the public. And, um, I'm aware that people are actually working with. The good government groups that we heard from. Uh, uh, Asian law caucus common cause League of women voters to come up with a joint proposal. Um, to make our jobs easy, to to give us something that we can react to as a body and also solicit feedback from the public to see if there are aspects they want to tweak or whatever, so that it is truly a collaborative effort that hopefully we all end up with something that everybody likes, that, that um, everyone can go forth and work with the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor to get it on the ballot and let the people vote. On it, so that's what I'm envisioning as a process rather than us drafting something or asking the city attorney to draft it is that. You know, they already, um, the community unity, uh. 
a map coalition already presented some key priorities and they, they told us they're still debating it themselves that they, what they want to propose to us. So that's, that's what I'm envisioning as a process so that we don't, we're not the ones saying, this is what we want that we actually hear from the public, what they want. And then we might disagree with some of it. Right. And, you know, there's some nuances here that I have in my questions, comments thing where I think we'll need to have some discussion about it because there are sometimes unintended consequences and what have you, and we might have different point of view. Uh, and then we endorse a package basically that then goes to the board of supervisors and, and the mayor, and they may have, you know, edits and whatever. And then it'd be it, so that's something that's a very collaborative and process that involves uh, all the parties that are concerned about making sure we have a fair process in San Francisco. So just as that. You, you haven't spoken yet. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, and I definitely would like to um, hear all the sides of things. So, um, uh, thank you for the work on this. I really, um, I also want to apologize for the way that I postponed this conversation. Um, that was, um, not, that was not in the best way. So I, I did want to apologize for that for the last meeting to the whole commission. Um, the, the feedback I have, and I went, I went through it and I, I actually, I, I kind of went back and forth of sending written feedback or just talking about in person. And I think I will provide more, like I, I did a bunch of detailed feedback that I'll provide um, offline and make sure that it's included um, publicly for everyone. But there were a couple of high level things that I thought of. Um, the first is I really appreciate all of the questions and comments um, that were posed. I think those were um, extremely um, valuable. I think the big, takeaway I have is actually quite similar to Commissioner Hayden Crowley, um, which is, I, I think I left um, reading through it and providing all my feedback to just wondering, you know, what is the output? What is the end goal of the this um, initiative, like this project? Um, and I think you, uh, Commissioner Dye, just walked through some of it. I think something that might be valuable is uh, documentation or 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 just a high level outline of maybe the process that was just um, explained. So it's, we're, you know, next steps this, uh, or next step is potentially having more questions answered, um, then uh, asking for proposals to be developed, um, then having special meeting, then, um, you know, how it's presented to, uh, you know, all of what you described. And the reason I'm interested in that is because I do think, um, in line with what Commissioner Hayden Crowley said, that it would behoove us to have a plan for working with the supervisors and the mayor as soon as possible, um, even if we don't have, you know, something something kind of tied up just to begin that process. Um, and the other thing I would say is, I think there are a lot of questions still outstanding um, that would make it uh difficult at this point at least on my end as someone who would be voting on anything to make a, a full recommendation on anything um so i agree that having a full draft of the proposal who if whether it's the city attorney's office or the coalition themselves i think we can discuss that um, but i think um seeing all of the like the actual kind of procedures and processes of what we want the redistricting to look like um, and what we're actually putting in front of voter, what we would be putting in front of voters to vote on um, would be helpful um, because, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, going on and on, but I think um, this is extremely helpful. I will provide more detailed written feedback, but I'd love to get a sense of what the final output would be and how you wanna get there, I guess. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. thank you. I'm sure Hayden Crowley. Um, yes, oh, sorry, thank you. just a moment. Do you see your floors? Yes, uh, just um, a point of clarification. Um, the city attorney's office doesn't normally draft legislation for commissions, um, and uh, I don't know if it would be proper because we wouldn't know what what exactly you want on the legislation. So any that, requests? That, that's why my thinking is let's accept a draft from good government groups 
and let's respond to it and let the public respond to it and tweak it because I agree. I don't think that's normal. Yes, uh, if you're also thinking of going that route, I mean, the public can also go the voter initiative route as well. If they're going to do the work, they might as well just run with it. Um, so, but whatever it is, uh, we'll be here to help you if, if it's possible. Uh, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. That was actually, thank you, President Jordanic. That was actually the question I was going to ask because so much of things that I've worked on in the past has have to be run through the city attorney's office. So I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe not a ballot initiative. Um, but I would ask Director Arntz, when ballot initiatives are submitted to the Department of Elections for consideration, do they have to be vetted by attorneys? No, no, there's nothing in the law that requires a charter amendment language to be vetted by attorneys. There'd have to be a, a title and summary that the city attorney's office would draft. But as far as any sort of uh, pres prescribing, prescribing of uh, or adhering to current law, I don't, I'm not aware of even the city attorney's office during the title and summary giving that sort of advice. Um, and our and the department certainly doesn't do any sort of review of the of the text of a proposed measure. We're, we're we administer the the process of accepting and then uh, reviewing the signatures when that when the, the petition is is uh, submitted. So the answer in short is, is no. There's no requirement that it be vetted or signed off by any sort of legal advice. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um. And then just a reminder. Um. Uh, the initiative process would be wonderful, but it's expensive and it takes a lot of time and you simply need a majority of the Board of Supervisors. The last I asked this question, because I, I actually miscommunicated at a meeting, I thought you needed at least nine supervisors. In fact, you only need six supervisors and of course you want all of them, but it's a lot easier to get the majority of the supervisors to buy in on this um, and vote. And remember, they're not, this isn't going to affect them because this is going to happen 10 years from now. But uh, so I think they, particularly if, if it is brought to them by value, you know, pe people in the community who they have relationships with, who, you know, they have maybe votes with, that kind of a thing, um, that they would be much more in interested and inclined to listen to something that right now I, they probably aren't all that interested because it doesn't affect them and it's 10 years 10 years is so long i mean there's so many huge problems right now so getting their attention is going to be very challenging but if you get the right people in the community to do it and you can probably get six votes and and that's the way i would pursue it okay um I was going to wanted to make a comment myself, um, and this this is you had asked if there were any topics that you thought people would like to take a deep dive on, and early on in our meetings about the redistricting reform, um, I know I had a particular interest in one topic, and maybe other people did, but um, we had decided early on to kind of limit the scope of what we talked about just due to our own time constraints and, and bandwidth. And um, it, it would just, we, we have to limit ourselves. And even though some of these other reforms could potentially, you know, address these things too. So I was wondering if um, it would be possible for us to maybe um, consider inviting someone to talk about the topic of, of um, you know, the idea of having a, like a charter committee that meets on a regular basis, like every 10 years or some kind of a citizens assembly, like, um, I know, well, Portland has the charter committee that meets every 10 years and kind of like what we did 30 years ago with the elections task force, basically some kind of a body that would be more equipped to look at some of these issues that we ourselves didn't have time for. So that way, you know, in addition to our own recommendations, we can also make a recommendation as to how to structure a body that could look at some of the other things that we, we may not have had time for. And then we could, um, you know, make suggestions about how those, the composition of that body could be selected, probably very similar to how members of redistricting um, task force should be selected. But I mean, I, I could imagine inviting someone that was participating in the Portland process 
or um, I, I think there may be some citizens assembly happening in California or another state. But point of clarification. Are you saying, just so I understand, um, President Jordanic, the are you talking specifically about redistricting? Um, like uh, the committee every 10 years would be thinking about how to amend the chart, continuously amend the charter in the context of representation? Or are you talking? It, I just, it sounded maybe a little bit broader than that. And I want to make sure I'm really clear on what you were saying. Yeah. So it would be sort of. I mean, and we could discuss it, but it would, I think my understanding is that in other, some other cities, they have, after their redistricting process, they have a charter committee that meets to kind of look at if issues of democracy and representation kind of more broadly than what we've looked at. And they could look at things like, you know, um, you know, proportional representation or, um, you know, just different ways of organizing the government that would maybe be broader than what we've looked at, but it would be limited more to, you know, kind of governmental representation. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. President Jordanik, thank you. Does the grand jury do any of that right now? Um, I don't, I don't recall seeing them cover that topic. Okay. I know the elections task force did that, which we heard them, you know, okay. they spoke to us about that. But okay. that was 30 years ago. Okay. Um, my concern with your request has to do with the practical uh, um, approach of getting the supervisor's attention for a limited scope. I think if we bite off more than we can chew, and 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 I, I feel like while you're so well intentioned here, I feel like we're already kind of. How do I want to say this? Uh, doing more than maybe what our uh, what our char our charter amendment allows us to do. So so right there, we need to be mindful of the fact that there's going to be people out there that are particularly given the most recent events that are going to say, "What are you doing?" So I do think that we need to, if we want to be successful with what is in front of us, we need to limit the scope of it. In order to get people's attention and be successful, if you t if you put too much in there, I guarantee you it won't pass. It just won't. Well, I mean, it could be also, you know, just an advisory body that doesn't require a charter amendment. I mean, the the, the type of body that I'm suggesting, but. Um, I had a question of clarification. Commissioner Volsi, um, Commissioner Volsi, are you asking for a body in addition to the task force? And would that body be a body that would review what occurred after um, a redistricting process or look at things altogether different? So I just want clarification. So it, it would be a different body. Okay. And it would be, um, I guess they could kind of review how things went. But it would it would be to kind of like propose broader reforms around democracy and representation. Got it. Whereas the redistricting task force would be strictly about what the lines should be. Okay. So I I guess my I have a similar concern is are we going outside of the scope of our responsibility as a commission? So I think. I think that's a question we should ask. Um, and to Commissioner Hayden Crowley's point, if we want to get this passed, we do need to be narrowly tailored and focused on how we do it. But I but I also think if it's not outside of the scope of this commission, it would be a good idea to look into those into some kind of body that would look into that, but maybe that if it's within the scope of our um responsibilities, that could be something that could happen after we get this passed. That would be my recommendation, but I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I, I think we should be clear that what you're suggesting we can do. And to, if we can take 1 step at a time, get this passed and then. Um, create a body if allowed to, to look at um, some of the issues you're talking about. Yeah, I mean. I guess 
I mean, one. I mean, one thing that the, the topic that I'm suggesting could be a lot easier because it wouldn't require a charter amendment mm -hmm. and it could happen in parallel to a charter amendment where so. Um, I mean, in terms of like, is it in, in our scope? I mean, I saw ourselves, we were saying, well, we don't have time to look at these issues and we just, you know, didn't look at those issues, but I feel like. You know, it would be sort of a natural thing for us to say is given that we didn't have time to look at these issues, we would recommend that, you know, there, there would be a body that could look at these. Um, cause I think, I think they are in scope for the elections commission because it's about how do we elect our representatives mm, and we're okay. trying to represent the people and the diversity. Um, but I know we just didn't have time. Mm -hmm. you know. Got it. Thank you. Vice president stone. Thank you. Um. I hear that. I think I, I guess I go back to the question of what problem we're trying to solve for. Um, and I think, I think I'm not going to restate what uh, my fellow commissioners have shared about the scope because I, I, I share those sentiment, but I think just remembering what our, what, what we're trying to solve for. And I think um, maybe just reframing why we would be doing that, what what the need is mm -hmm. to do that um, might be helpful in thinking about the scope. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the reason that we started down this path to begin with was that there was a lack of public trust in the process as it was standing. And, you know, there were mistakes made and on in so many ways. And that was a problem that as a body we chose to try and solve. Um, and so I guess my question, if we were to explore that, and I, I think we, we should just maybe hold off on it for a little bit is what is the problem that we're trying to solve for? If that's something that we would be, um, if that's something that we would be considering as a body. Well, I think, I mean, there's a couple, like one of the, one of the contentious points of redistricting is that when you have a district and you can only elect one person or sorry, you can only have one representative of that district. The district might have a great diversity within it. And it's it's kind of inevitable that there's going to be a lot of conflict. But if you have consider alternative election systems where you elect, you know, multiple people from larger districts proportionally, then you could number one, it makes the particular boundaries less important. So it could reduce the conflict about redistricting, but also it would guarantee that when you have an election using that method, you would be a lot more likely to be representing the diversity of within that larger district. So I think it would be an alternative way of solving a lot of the things that, um, you know, problems that came up most recently, but, but just using a more general approach and, um, but it, it could also be complementary. Uh, Commissioner Dye. Thank you. So, um, so I hear what you're saying, uh, President Gerdonic, but I agree with the sentiments of uh, some other commissioners here that I, I do think we need to focus if we're going to, to get this particular proposal across the finish line. I do think it's within the scope of the Elections Commission to look at better systems of representation. And to the degree that we feel like we don't have time to, you know, deal with that in the scope of our normal business, that I think it would be within our mandate to to spawn an advisory body like the elections task force of 30 years ago to study it in greater detail and to 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 present us with a recommendation. Um, so, uh, so I agree with the sentiment. I just, I think that we just need to kind of follow through with the limited scope that we all agreed on for this redistricting initiative first, uh, because we do want to get this on the ballot, uh, in 2024. And well, it sounds like it's a long time away as commissioner Hayden Crowley has pointed out, we kind of needed to start yesterday and, you know, we need to get at least six supervisors behind it. 
we need to get a very specific proposal to them so they can get behind it. And so there, there are a bunch of steps that need to happen. And um, so, I, so I agree with you. I, I think that that's something we should do. I just think that we need to do this first. <laughs> so, um, so let me just summarize what I've heard. Um, I heard from Commissioner Bernholtz there are a couple of issues that she would like to understand more deeply. And so, Commissioner Lavolsi and I will talk about how to. Um, you know, bring some experts in or provide some more uh, information on that uh, at our next uh, available uh, meeting. Um, I heard from Vice President Stone that we should document the process, the next steps. So we'll do an update on our redistricting initiative document with looking forward what we estimate our next steps to be. Um, and uh, and from President Dronic, I think we can look at this issue of whether we can take it on ourselves um, after we get this across the finish line uh, and or spawn uh, a, an advisory body to to look into it further. Because the elections task force, remember, only existed because the elections commission was not yet created. Now that the elections commissions exist, I think it's fully within our purview to look at those issues. If we decide we don't have time, I think it's reasonable for us to to ask an advisory task force to advise us so that we can take those issues on. Any other thoughts on this before Pre President Jordan? Won't we have time if you set this if if you pass this redistricting initiative because you won't you won't be worried about anything. <laughs> and I think to your point, President Jordanic, um, this, the example that you gave, I actually made notes to that effect about the diversity because it's it evolves. So, but I, so I do think that I mean that's a question that I have a, I didn't bring up because it, this is stuff that should be hammered out by the communities. They need to figure out how, how I mean because just in my district four, which I was part of district seven, got moved into four, but that my district has changed a lot, and so. Um, you know, how it was originally district 4 was originally a voting rights district. I, I don't know what the status of it is all changed. And so I think that you have to build that into any kind of proposal to, um, kind of anticipate that things will change demographically and how are we going to address that? And that has to be built into that. And I guess, again, from a practical standpoint, and I hate to just kind of lay it out on the line, but here's the thing. If if this was if we were trying to get this on the ballot and we still had supervisors that were going to vote on this that were going to be affected by it, I think they would vote against it. Nobody wants to have power taken away from them. But see, this isn't going to affect them because 10 years from now, they're not unless, of course, somebody runs again after seeing because the, none of those supervisors, not even the most recent uh, recently elected ones or the mayor will be in those positions. And if if you have people out in the in the um, in the uh, communities that are their supporters that they have good relationships with that are touting this as good government and you you have those supervisors understand that I mean we're not taking power away from them. I will say that if you have a committee that wants to analyze analyze something and 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 do more with the charter, and I, I don't quite understand exactly what you mean, that's taking power away from the board. And they're not gonna go for that. They, I mean, it's just that simple. They, they we, we just don't, they, they don't like to have power taken away from them. And we do not have the power to do that. Sorry, that's just. Okay, any further discussion before we take public comment? Okay, let's take public comment on this item. We have no hands raised. Okay. Um, Commissioner Stein, we'll see. Was there anything else you'd like to mention before we move on? Yeah, just if anything else comes up uh, before the next meeting, you know, if you have written feedback you want to provide or additional afterthoughts, um, please share them so we can build it into our schedule and our planning for any further education. But uh, if not, I think we can move to hearing proposals from the public, you know, maybe maybe in March, April, something in that time frame. And then we'll have something that we can throw up against the wall and have specific reactions to and get down and dirty in some detail. 
Okay, well, thank you very much for both of your work and um, uh, to be continued. Okay, so let's move on to agenda item number six, director's report. Discussion, possible action regarding the director's report. Okay, okay. thank you. I can uh, take questions on the report itself, but just a couple extra items. So, and in Alameda, the rank choice voting um, uh, re results reporting over there. Uh, so what happened was that Alameda set up their ranked choice voting to where uh, in the Dominion system where the first column, uh, if it was blank, it was left blank when the ranked choice voting algorithm was applied. And that's a setting issue. It's not a voting system issue. So the, the voting system actually worked the way it was programmed, the way it was set up for that election. Um, and I know there's there's been conversation open source would have solved this, but it's not, again, it's not a voting system. It's a, it's a setting issue. And then what we do in San Francisco is that how we set up the rank choice contest is actually at the top of the results. So if you look at the rank choice results, you see the settings for how the system will, will calculate or uh, tabulate the votes. Uh, so that that's one way that we provide information to the public that the rank choice uh, part of the system is set up to uh, to operate correctly. And we also uh, post the cast vote record on our on our website. So every time that we issue results reports, we we include the cast vote record. Uh, so it's not not just every time that we that we uh, post ranked choice on, on election night, but also any time that we do uh, results on election night. That every day thereafter that we issue results, we post the cast vote record. I saw that uh, Commissioner Jordanic was referencing some tool, uh, some that the ranked choice voting resource center. I guess has it's not approved, but I guess it's a tool that people use to check rank choice contest. So that CVR file is actually what you would use with that rank choice voting center resources center tool. Um, but the system operated correctly. It was a setting issue in San Francisco. The settings were correct. The results in San Francisco are accurate. There's uh, there's no concern on my part that any any vote any contest or any way uh, uh, wrong or that the results should be different. So I just want to put that out there first. And then the second item, uh, both commissioners Die and Stone uh, sent me the um, letter from Professor Holderman uh, from the University of Michigan about potentially someone finding out how another person voted. I mean, the scenario is rather remote. I mean, I, I understand, I, I understand how theoretically it could happen, and, and I can go into more reasons why it's it's, far, it's remote. Uh, but I did contact Dominion after I received the letters, uh, the letter, and the Dominion has actually submitted an upgrade to its system, to the Secretary of State's office, and part of that upgrade is uh, is a is a fix to the situation. So, even though it's remote, that what Professor Holderman uh, alleges could happen uh, would that that particular function functionality or reporting, I guess it's a reporting issue, uh, uh, will not be uh, present in the system after it goes through review, review of the Secretary of State's office. So, uh, so going forward, there's no concern uh, as far as uh, you know current uh, results reports. I mean, we've already posted those uh, and, and no one's come forward to me saying that anyone has been watching the counter at the at the polling places. And uh, so I, I don't I, 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 we're not going to remove the report, the results reports from previous elections. Uh, I just don't I, I just don't think there's a, a real uh, concern there as far as at this point, especially we're past the elections. Um, so those are the two items that, uh, that I would bring up. And I can take any questions on, the, on my report from there. Uh, commissioners, does anyone have any questions for the director, Vice President Stone? I just had a very quick question that I thought could be helpful with the, actually the re, like in the context of thinking about redistricting um, about the voter outreach. I know shocking that that is what I'm um, asking about, but um, I was wondering if there are. Um, I guess I was just wondering how the feedback from the from the public or voter outreach is organized um, and it doesn't necessarily need to be something you share now but perhaps there's some intel that the department could also 
uh, provide in the redistrict thinking about redistricting and how to manage um, public um, uh, public feedback um, because I imagine that the department has um, a pretty like robust way of managing that um, that input. So I don't I don't know if you want to respond now, but also you could just share it at a later date too. There's no rush, um, but I know that you're working on it based on page three. Um, yeah, page three. You said the the uh, 2023 voter outreach program lasts through um, August 2023, the first phase of it. So um, thought it could be valuable. But other than that, I was excited to obviously see the focus of the communities that you guys are working. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. Um, yeah, I think I get to. Uh, benefit from being the new person here and ask some things that maybe others already know, but um, I also was really curious about the voter outreach program um, and excited to see the, the groups that you'll have specific targeting towards and was um, just curious now or at a later time. Um, of course, coming from the education field, I was curious about the soon to, soon to be voters and what kind of outreach you're looking at for those 16 and 17 year olds. What kind of partnerships? I assume that all of these have partnerships involved to reach these specific populations, but I wondered if there's just more you can share. So we provide information to the school district and we also contact the school as soon as we get closer to an election. And then we also have a, a high school ambassador program. So we actually go into the high schools mm -hmm. and then we, we actually and we're, we've been rather successful too, and it, uh, I think going into 2024 will be as successful, if not more so, uh, with our high, high school ambassador program, where we actually engage with students who want to uh, come into the department, or usually they come into the department, or we, we go, we can, we, we go to the schools, but we also bring them into the department, and we, you know, we 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 give them uh, just background and registration, the process. Uh, registering people, what happens when people get registered about voting, and then though the ambassadors then it's sort, sort of like peer leadership. So then the ambassadors go back to the schools and then they would engage with, with their peers and then try to get them registered, uh, try to get them informed about voting elections. Uh, then we've also had people come through the department. So we'll give tours, so they'll come through and we'll all stand up and, you know, give our spiel about our divisions and what we do. and. Uh, and so, so it varies, but there, but there, and every, and also uh, the highest, the, the, the schools are one of the primary locations we have for polling places. And so we have an ongoing relationship with the school district. So it's not just like we just show up and say, well, you know, we, we want to start our high school ambassador program. So we have an ongoing relationship with, with the school district, with, with, with their administrative personnel. Uh, we also do with the principals at the schools. Uh, some schools are more responsive than others. Um, but then also that, that next step, to engage with the students would be our high school ambassador program. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Commissioner Hayden Crow. Thank you, President Jordanik. Um, Director Arns, I was looking at item D, the budget, and you have to cut your budget. What is that gonna look like? Yeah, it's always tough with elections because you know we're going to the presidential cycle, so now we're also not having an election in November 2023, and so we know we can assume that March 20 and March might change. We don't even know what the primary is going to be, but right now the the primary is scheduled for March, and uh, we can assume that more measures, local measures, will be on that ballot. And then we also know that this this uh, was it 14, 16, 16, 14. I can't remember. Uh, change to allow for state measures, the proponent opponents to be listed oh, with yes. each measure. And then also the local, the, the counties can also opt into that. So potentially San Francisco could opt into having the proponent opponent listed on, on for each measure. Uh, so just on the state side, we, we, you know, we expect a 50% increase in space just for the state measures. Mm -hmm. And we expect a lot of, a lot of measures locally, since there's no election in 2023. Uh, with that, with the reason I'm saying all this is that it's hard for us to cut, you know, so if our expenses are going to increase uh, because of the type of election, and then they're going to increase even more because changes in law, then basically we have to just lay out where, you know, where we are making efficiencies. Uh, and then that'll be in the, the memo that we present uh, to the commission, I think, ne end of next week. And, you know, we're trying to make efficiencies on, on hiring, how we hire people so we can spend less time 
uh, the managers aren't putting as much time in, in bringing people in and, and getting them prepared to undertake their responsibilities. But as far as election costs, no, they're not going to go down. We can't cut elections costs. And for presidential cycle, they're going to go up. And that's going to be a conversation we have with the mayor's office prior to our submission of the budget. And it'll be also a conversation with the board's budget analysts when we submit to the board. And it'll probably be a conversation when we have the budget hearings as well. But it's hard for us, especially going to presidential cycle, to actually hit these, these targeted reductions that are put forward by the mayor's office. We will try to find it efficiencies and try to hit the five and eight percent reductions in certain areas. But again, the overall costs are probably going to go up for the department. Yeah. Um, the second thing is just a, um, uh, the self-interest of the commission. I don't, since I'm new, I don't know what our budget is as part of the Department of Elections. Do we have a budget? It, we, we have a, this is um, uh, Vice President Stone. We have a line item that covers our secretary's position. So we have no other budget that is other than the secretary's Well, there actually are three line items in the budget for incidental costs. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's maybe a few thousand dollars uh -huh. for like paper and, and, and things like that. Uh -huh. um, but uh, so, but no, you don't have like uh, uh, any sort of uh, line item for uh, laptops. Right. <laughs> I got uh, that. <laughs> like um, other commissions do. You know, but but uh, um, yeah, but certainly the commission could can put forward proposals. Uh, for expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year or years, and then we can include those in the budget. And then, if, then also you'll have to provide some sort of substantiation right. for those costs, and we can bring those forward to the mayor's office and include those costs in our conversations when we, when we review the budget prior to submission. I could see where the efficiencies are going to come in. <laughs> okay, so that's something though, as the, I, because I'm new to this process, we as a as a group talk about that. Okay, because we probably need to identify where we might need budget. And even if we have no hope, we should still ask. Mm -hmm. We should always ask because then we could come back next year when downtown is populated again and the tax receipts are huge. <laughs> <laughs> we can always wish. Hey, Vice President Stone. Yes, um, I just wanted to respond and also follow up on a question and then ask um, follow up, ask the director a question. And then I have a 3rd um, comment about the budget. Um, so we actually had as a commission talked a little bit about budget, having an independent budget. Um, and I did begin. Uh, I actually spoke with um, DCA Flores and um, Russi about. Um, who to speak with about that. So I had begun the process, um, but obviously the last several months on this commission was our focus and time was elsewhere. So um, I think it's great that there's appetite for that and I, I very much support it. Um, and it actually goes to my, my point, my third point. So I'll just go straight to that, which is um, understanding the timeline of when things need to be presented um, because I was looking at, you know, we have to have uh, two meetings to review the department's budget, um, 15, at least 15 days apart. Um, and if you look at our schedule, uh, we uh, would have to have a special meeting to review the budget or BOPEC. And so um, I propose that we call a BOPEC meeting um, in addition to the February 15th meeting where we can do um, uh, the, the full review, but hopefully BOPEC could do a review and perhaps um, Commissioner Hayden Crowley, if you are interested um, in participating in BOPEC, um, you could also come have some additional thoughts around um, what could be included in a ask around budget. So just wanted to throw that out there that we should think about BOPEC. Um, and then I wanted to ask the director a specific question about um, just point of clarification. When you said um, that the that counties can cop that can opt in to fourteen sixteen. So what is that like who opts how what is the process of opting in? Is that you know kind of sole discretion of uh, the department? Is that the supervisors? How is that determined? Yeah, so the board would have to actually opt into having the pro pro proponent and opponent listed on the ballot measures, local ballot measures. Sorry, would you mind repeating that? So the board would have the to board. Yes, okay, I just didn't hear that. Okay, thank you. That's all. 
Okay, are there further questions? Uh, Director Ernst, I have a couple of questions. Um, so thank you for commenting on the Alameda County situation. I, you know, I agree with your comments. You know, it was not a problem with the Dominion system. It was just a how they had configured it. But I was wondering, um, and I've been following that pretty closely, but um, just relative to how, you know, the, our department works, how are those configuration files set up? Is that usually like a, you know, a county staff person or is it, does the Dominion come in and configure it for you? Or, or is that something that you, is done on election night or is it set up in advance? Do you have any idea? Yeah, so Dominion takes the definition files and sets up the election. So you think it's something that they set up for the county over there? Do you think or no? The Alameda actually sets up their own election, so they made that choice. Okay, and then they do it in advance of the election. Is it? Of course, that's so, so ballots are created after the elections are defined. I see, um, but I mean in terms of how the the RCB is tallied, is that that's part of the election definition? Yes, but it's also a setting. Okay. So that is something that could have been changed. Uh, so we actually ran, because one thing that, so we actually, one thing that came up to in Alameda is that they did what's called single elimination of candidates in ranked choice instead of simultaneous elimination. And, and we actually do single elimination as well. The charter requires simultaneous elimination. And we changed it years ago, actually part of, uh, from the commission, uh, ongoing series of, of meetings and, and comments uh but we we probably should issue a uh, simultaneous elementary report but we so we even though we uh we had the right settings we 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 uh we did check to see if simultaneous and uh single elimination created different results and they don't it's the same math i mean it's, just, it's the same votes but that was one of the issues that was coming up in Alameda at the time that we checked and my point is it's a setting and so we're we're able to toggle on off on off so even though we, even though Dominion defines our elections, they set it up, that's something that we check ourselves. And that's why I bring up that on our website, when you look at the ranked choice results, you can see the settings for the ranked choice tabulation. And, that's, and those are all the settings that, uh, and the one with single elimination versus simultaneous, that's one uh, that uh, Alameda uh, changed. And then, however, what's different with Alameda is, is they selected a report version. So this goes back to reporting, actually. So Alameda wanted the reports to look differently, and this goes back to you know what the commission was talking about, and I you know and I heard that was being risk averse around these reports, uh, but they they wanted the reports to look differently. I mean, they wanted a better report, and I, and the the setting that they chose was for the Minneapolis uh, version of ranked choice. It has a different report, which Alameda wanted, but Alameda didn't realize. My understanding is that. That setting for the because the Minneapolis ranked choice voting is different than San Francisco ranked choice voting, which is different. And Alameda is more based on San Francisco ranked choice voting. So when the report was pulled from the Minneapolis ranked choice voting approach, it created a different tabulation method essentially. So that's what happened in Alameda. Uh, but yeah, they 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 could have and they, if they had posted the cast vote record then they potentially, someone potentially could have caught. And then you mentioned, I saw that you were quoted talking about this tool from the uh, ranked choice uh, resource voting, whatever it is. And uh, you know, if, if people are using that, then, then they, they could pull ours, for instance, on election that they could have pulled Alameda's if it had been posted. Um, so does that answer your question? Yeah, and then just one, one follow up on that. Um... I know one of the things that the Board of Supervisors over there has been talking about is they wanted to, they're requesting a recount of some of the races over there, and they mentioned wanting to bring in a, like a, a registrar from like a neighboring county with experience in ranked choice voting. So I'm wondering, have they reached out to you? No. No? Okay. Um, and then secondly, I don't want to get into the the Halderman stuff, just because it's, um, you know, that was only a few days ago, but um, did the Secretary of State contact you before the election? Because I guess Halderman had contacted the Secretary of State well in advance of the election. Contact me personally? No, I didn't I mean, the, the department. Um, Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's all the questions I have. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you also for the 
the information in section five that we had requested. That's very helpful. Um, yeah, you know, relating to our document. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there any anything else before we move on to public comment? Okay, let's take public comment on this item. We have one hand raised. Mr. Turner, you are unmuted, and I will, you have three minutes. Uh, thank you, commissioners. And again, for the sake of sort of framing here, um, I want to associate myself uh, with the work we were doing over in Alameda right now with the NAACP, who has been quite helpful, as well as the Southern Poverty Law Center, who has continued to support open source voting. Um, we just want to make mention of a couple things that I don't know, Mr. Arnst, I don't want to say that he's made a misstatement, but um, no one said that open source would have necessarily solved the Alameda setting issue. Uh, but certainly it is conceivable that having a more modern system over there um, could have avoided that problem with settings. Um, the problem is when you have a corporate vendor involved, you do run the risk of what we're seeing with the Alameda situation and, and they're not being good uh, oversight and controls over the system. So obviously, uh, rest ipsa locator, you had a situation where it was one person announced as a winner one day and one person, another person the next. So um, obviously we have a problem. It's not to be deflected or minimized. Um, and it is a, a similar system. This raises the issue, certainly in the uh, opinion of most all uh, election experts, you should not have ranked choice voting. Um, on top of a proprietary system, if you're going to use ranked choice voting, you necessarily should have a an open source general public license system. Um, that's just the science on it. Uh, I know John, uh, you know, advocates for proprietary systems, but Dr. Halderman is a very high ranking scientific expert on point of national security, and he's called out the issues with the Dominion systems. We're not saying that to inflame the public or try to get them not to vote or participate. We're trying to have an adult conversation um, with the commission that has so much ability on this subject matter. So thank you for listening to that. Um, we're, we're just um, recognizing the Oakland situation. We're not saying that that is going on in San Francisco, but since the systems are the same with Dominion, it does make sense that we take a look at what Dr. Holderman is, Holderman is saying, and that again, we try to expedite moving toward these better systems. As far as the innuendo by uh, an earlier caller saying that, you know, this has something to do with New Mexico or something, I, I think uh, hopefully that's just naivete. Um, certainly uh, everyone that I've been associated with in my 15 years uh, associating with this commission has been very uh, cordial and, and we appreciate that tone. Uh, carrying on. So, thank you all very much. Thank you. Your 3 minutes has just stopped. <clears throat> okay, there are no more hands raised. Okay, so public comment is closed. Are there any other. Comments before we move on. Okay, great. And thank you again, director Ernst, for your report. All right, so let's move on to agenda item number seven, move to SF.gov website. Discussion of possible action regarding the new citywide SF.gov website and the move of the Elections Commission and Department of Elections websites to SF.gov. Okay, so today we have an invited speaker, um, Ms. Amy Martin, and she is a project manager with Digital Services. And she and I have been in touch with, I wanna say September, at least since October on, um, basically talking with me about moving the commission's website to their new platform. And um, originally the, the hope was that we would be moved by like late October, but um, you know, there's just been so much going on and we wanted to wait until after the election. But I'm gonna let um, Amy just speak to us about this project and not just relative to our, our own website, but also the department's website. And uh, I, I wanna thank you for being here today and also for your patience and waiting for the item. So thank you, Amy. Thank you. Um, I think we need to turn it on maybe. 
Is this on now? Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, as President Jernonik said, my name is Amy Martin, um, and I'm a project manager with San Francisco Digital Services. We're a division of the city administrator's office here in the city of San Francisco. Uh, excuse my speaking with a mask on today. I share my home with a very toxic creature called a preschooler, <laughs> um, and I don't want to bring any of that in here for you. Um, so I'm here to talk to you today about uh, moving the commission's website onto sf.gov. And I have a very short presentation about um, what sf.gov is and what this means for your commission's website. I'm sure you're all wondering also what happens to the information that is on the old website, and I can show you a little about that too. Um, let's see, am I sharing? Yeah. It looks like I'm sharing my slides yeah. now. Great. The public can see as well. Great, that's okay. Um, and then, as was said, uh, we are also beginning the process of moving the Department of Elections site to sf.gov as well, so I can talk a little about that. Are um, our commissioners familiar with uh, SF.gov, the website? I know we spoke a little about it in the hallway before. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, the way SF.gov began is that the city and county of San Francisco um, traditionally have had many, many, even a couple of hundred websites distributed across multiple platforms. And over the last few years, my department digital services has begun the process of unifying them on a single platform, which is SF.gov. We work on the principles of accessibility and inclusion. Uh, those are really core to our mission design of SF.gov. It's the most accessible and inclusive website the city of San Francisco has. It's fully accessible to the most, uh, most recent standards designed for mobile devices, including older devices and browsers, because we know that um, Mobile accessibility doesn't mean that just the latest iPhone user can access um, your content on a, on a phone. We want somebody using a really old device that probably doesn't work very well to be able to access it as well. Uh, we ask people and we help people from departments write content um, in fifth grade English. That's obviously a difficult standard, uh, but we help people with it <laughs> and we get as close as we can sometimes. We offer human translations to Spanish, Chinese, and Filipino. Uh, we have pages that load quickly for people who live in data poverty, so people without good data plans um, who do not have access to quick loading pages. And we organize information into topics so that people who are not familiar with the city's organizational structure can still find the information that they need. Security and updates are taken care of by us, not by me, fortunately, by someone who is an engineer. Um, and digital services does everything to keep the SFDECOV safe and operational. Um, it's fully, it's, we're on Drupal 9, which is a switch from your, uh, your current platform, which is Drupal 7, fully supported and secure, and we're hosted on Pantheon and monitored by New Relic. So why move to SF.gov now? Um, in November 2022, or right around that time, Drupal 7 reached its end of life. This is just the phasing out of an older version of the product, and Drupal 9 is the version of the product that we are, that we've been moving people onto. It's the back end of our CMS for SF.gov. Um, and so we maintain all the security updates uh, going forward with that. So we needed to move everybody off of the Drupal 7 platform in 2022 uh, to comply with security for the city. So we moved um, about 60 city and county agency websites onto SF.gov last year from the Drupal 7 platform. So it was a very busy year. <laughs> um, also in November 2021, the city passed the Digital Accessibility and Inclusion Standard, which requires city websites have a plan to follow the rules within that standard by um, March of this year. And um, there's a link to the standard within this presentation. I won't go into all of it here, but um, you can read about it afterward. It has uh, rules around uh, fifth grade reading level language, plain language, writing on websites, uh, human translation where possible, and Let's see. Um, and websites being accessible in design as well. So your site is moving as part of that effort and Department of Elections is also moving as part of that effort. As far as what it means to be on SF.gov, for your staff, for people who will work on the site for the commission, it's an easy site to edit and update. You'll have clear usage data and reporting, and you'll have ongoing support from digital services with constant improvements. Since we're a team that's part of city and county of San Francisco, you don't have to worry about contracting with a vendor or anything like that. 
For San Franciscans, it means human translation, it's accessible, it's written at a fifth grade reading level or close to it, and it's usability tested. So it's centered around the needs of the people who live in the city. So we can take a look at your website um, as it's going to look on sf.gov. It is just um, newly published, which means that it's available to look at for, by the public, but it's not currently connected to anything. So people won't be able to discover it independently. So you all will have a chance to look it over uh, before the site actually goes live for the public. And I'm here tonight to answer questions. You can see a kind of a side-by-side -side comparison to, from the old site to the new site here. And this will be in your slide deck too for you to look over later. And then this is what a meeting looks like from the old site over to the new site. I really like the meeting pages on the old on the new site. I think they are a nice change. Also, now that you're moving over to the new site, your site will continue to evolve with sf.gov. You will get all of the upgrades that we make when we make them and all of the new functionality that we add, you'll have access to those. Case in point, um, we're moving what we call public body pages. So for commissions, committees, all of those are moving um, to become agency pages by the end of this month, which means you'll have additional functionality you can add. You can add a news feed if you want. When that happens, you'll be able to add events and you'll be able to add some spotlighted links, things like that. So uh, President Jordanic and I have talked a little bit about some of the additional things you'll be able to do. So you'll be able to add some interesting stuff to your website. Okay, and now I can show you a quick demo, if you'd like. Uh, while I pull this up, does anyone have questions? Is there, Mr. Hayden Crowley? It, do we have? So is someone at Digital Services doing all of this for us? Uh, well, the way the process works is that uh, we teach your staff how to do the work, and we do some of it. So we typically will onboard people from the departments. And we offer trainings um, right now. People from Department of Elections are going through a process of user research and uh, doing a we're doing a user research or user need workshop tomorrow. For example, um, it's a much shorter process when it's a commission because the content tends to be more straightforward than for a department. So, Commissioner or President Jordanic and I have just met a few times over the last few months, and I've explained how the process works. He attended a training, a couple of trainings, I think. Um, and got login permissions and then was able to create most of these pages himself. So I did a few and he did a few. Ms. President Stone? Yeah, I, I had a question about that. I was unclear as well, so I appreciate that question. Um, and after reading through the process the, that the department is going through to transition their website, I just wanted to understand, I mean, because it's clearly a, a, I mean, I think it's, it's at seven phases spanning the course of six months. Mm -hmm. um, and so how many of those, I mean, because obviously there's what pre-engagement, whatever, mm -hmm. there, there are many steps here. Um, the, that all of these steps, including kind of user assessment and understanding how um, after it's transitioned, whether it, you know, doing an assessment of its efficacy. And so I guess my question is, Based on where it stands currently, how many of those stages at the department, obviously a significantly bigger undertaking, uh, but we, you know, we have been in operation for 20 plus years. So we have a lot of stuff on our website. Um, right. How many of these stages have gone been done for um, us and how many are still to come? And then how much of that will be done by our staff, which is zero. Um, and <laughs> yeah. um, how much of that will come from digital services? That's really good questions. Uh, the process for moving a public body, like a commission or a board or a committee is fairly condensed from the process of moving a department. And the reason for that is the way we organize SF.gov is around services provided to the public. Um, and so when we think about setting up a new website, whether it's for a department or a division of a department or a public body, we think about what services they're providing to the public. And that tends to be where most of the discovery and the work needs to happen that we're carrying out in those initial phases and the phases where we're doing research and user testing, things like that. So with a site like Department of Elections, there's quite a lot of discovery work to do because we wanna be sure we really understand the user needs. They actually have done a lot of that work over the last few years. So we have like kind of a, a background to, um, to start from uh, because they've been doing user testing and their staff have been really involved in the website 
it sounds like. That's great to hear. Yeah, so, um, so we have a really good um, platform to start from, but um, there is still quite a lot of work to do around building up the services that will live on SF.gov and how we're gonna structure those. Whereas with a commission or a committee or a public body, we typically know the service that is being provided. And that is the, um, the discussions that you have here, the decisions that you're making, the transparency of having your meetings posted online and having your materials available online. And so we have a pattern that's fairly well established for putting those together and for presenting them on a website. And so it is typical with a commission or a committee that we would do a quick review of the website and make sure that there's not like a service you offer to the public like um, I'm thinking of one uh, commission that there's the um, a, a group that I've worked with is the shelter monitor shelter monitoring committee and they offer a service to the public, which is that you can file a complaint with them about a shelter. And so that was a public body where we did have to actually write a service for them. And so we did a little more investigative work at the beginning for that. Um, but typically with a public body, the process is fairly straightforward because we have a really well-defined path. So a lot of the steps that are outlined for a department like Department of Elections, um, we don't need to do for a public body. Does that answer that question? Yeah, the only other piece of that that I um, would love to know is just how much more needs to be done and how much of that, what percentage of that will have to come on us versus like- Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to have more development work to do around the site. Um, from here, the agency page conversion that I mentioned will be automated and that's going to happen before the end of this month. So you should see those changes coming up sometime before the end of January. Um, and then you will have more options to add features to your pages. Uh, we will offer some instructions to content leads, we call them. Um, so President Trudonic is the content lead for the site right now. You could add other people, you could switch the role if you wanted to. Uh, but we will offer information about the options that you have to add features to your site once that, um, once that new functionality is available. But you won't have to do that. I don't think that you will have to do anything else with your site aside from continuing to add your meeting materials and records to the site going forward. Thank you. Commissioner mm -hmm. Hayden Crowley. Um, President Jordanik, I unfortunately you do know my position on this situation, which is that um, I do have a lot of experience with SFGov and with doing a separate website and having to work with the city. And my, my issue is this, is that we are a seven member commission that is a volunteer position. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that President Jordanic has done all of the heavy lifting here, but I don't think it's appropriate at all. And this is where we come into the budget situation because I know of other commissions that have staff that are doing that. So long-term, this isn't a viable solution. It's not something you can solve, but it really isn't a viable solution because if President Jordanic's term ends in a year. Who's going to pick up the pieces here? Is it going to be our commission secretary? Where are we going to go with this? So this is a really serious question. There's also a question when you have something like this and President Jordanic's doing the heavy lifting here. I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> this is a, uh, uh, the, the employees, the city and county of San Francisco are 100% unionized. And these are often protected positions. So when that kind of thing comes up, it, it can be an issue that we are doing the work of a civil service employee. So we need to keep that in mind. And when the city imposes these kinds of deadlines on us as a commission to deliver this, they also need to provide a budget for us to do this because we are volunteers. Thank you for, again, President Jordanic, but again, I really feel that we need to, as a commission, anticipate these kinds of asks and budget for them. And if there is no budget, we need to say, you know, we don't have the budget for it. Do I, by the way, and I, I say this in, in, in kind of a tone that I, I, I don't mean it to be, uh, it, I, I know it's a little stern. It, it's just my, I, I'm rattled by it a little bit. But the fact of the matter is, is I think SFGov is a great website, and I have from the beginning. And 
when I did do the sheriff's website, we couldn't go live with SFGov because you weren't evolved enough. There, and I, I'm sure the sheriff's going to have to go on the SFGov website, and that's going to be real fun. But I had to. I wrote all the content, so I had to do all that fifth grade stuff and worked with you, and and it was fantastic. It really was, and I think it's the way to go. I absolutely do, but I think this commission needs to be funded to do it, as are other commissions. There are commissions that have staff that have that have um, contracts. When they don't have staff, they have contracts with outside vendors to do this work. And so we just need to, you know, not be like this orphan out here, doing all of our own work when we're volunteers. It's not appropriate. It could get us potentially in trouble. And um, we need to prepare for the future because President Jordanic is the one that's doing this and he will not be here in another year. But thank you for your work. <laughs> okay, um, was that a question or? No, it's a okay. comment. So I'm gonna turn it to Commissioner Bernholtz. She has her hand up. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to um, second the comments of uh, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. I I agree with everything she has had to say. This commission needs a staff person who can uh, be in charge of the website and um, just a big second to every, everything that was just said. Thank you. Commissioner Dye. And just to pile on, I, I think the, the question should be discussed at VOPAC and not only upgrading our commission secretary position to someone who could handle all the digital services that we need to support our own transparency. Um, and it may also mean having more than a half-time position. So I think that's something I would love for BOPEC to discuss. Okay, <laughs> uh, any other comments? Um, Amy, I had one thing. When you do the demo, I was wondering, one of the interests that commissioners had was in providing more information about the commission membership. Sure. And I was wondering if maybe you can show them what it, it makes available. Yes. Um, it's Although we're not using that feature quite yet, but. Yes, I can do that. Uh, let's see. In fact, I'm gonna. I can go back into the presentation. I have a sample agency page that has a really nice setup for that. I need to find it. Okay. Great. I was looking on the sample site mm -hmm. and, you know, we're clickable. Mm -hmm. We could actually provide bios. Mm -hmm. Because right now it says who, who yes. appoints us, so there's you a space that. there. Yeah. And I was going to say, too, um, as you have your discussion about staffing and who works on the website, um, feel free to reach out to us if you need more information about what the um, the skills are to work on SF.gov, because a lot of people think that it's technical and that you need to have skills in Drupal. And our engineers actually take care of all of that. I, it's more about content. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say that if you talk to any of the other commissions who have a commission secretary and they're maintaining meeting minutes and records, that that that's the it's roughly that skill set. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I will go back and show you your site first. Um, so this is a very again, this is the public body page look. Um, I'll show you in a second the agency page that this is going to become in um, a week or two. But right now, this is very simple. It has the title of your commission. It has a very brief description. Uh, this brief description also shows anywhere that this that your page is linked from another page on sf.gov. This brief description shows along with your title, and that's why it's very short right here. Below, you can have a little information about your meetings. This can contain anything that's relevant to all of your meetings together. Uh, below that, you have links to your upcoming meetings and then to your past meetings. And each meeting will get its own page. And I'll show you the uh, a meeting page in just a sec. Scrolling down a little further, there's an about page, and that is where um, all of your documents related to your committee work are now housed. And I'll show you that too. There's a subcommittee page for each of your two subcommittees, one of which I believe is not currently active, um, but, may, but maybe in the future. And so they each have a page of their own, and these operate similarly to the page we're looking at now. Going down further, there are commissioner profiles. Right now you have 
Um, all your positions filled, so you don't have any vacancies. That's great. Um, you, these are very simple, very basic profiles right now, but you can fill them out. You could add pictures if you wanted. This is the city and county seal, which displays by default, but there is, um, there's a lot of room for customization here. And then this is the link to your archive. Let me show you this really quickly. So as part of the move process to sf.gov, we archive the older site that um, the department is moving from. And so basically what that means is we make a copy of it. We use a product called Archive It, and it, that's from the Internet Archive. This is used by a lot of government agencies and universities. So it's essentially it's an exact copy of your site, and it should also capture all of your documents. So all of your previous meeting agendas, minutes, everything like that is available here. So we could take a look at the past meetings. Back and we can open an agenda and then any PDF documents, um, Word docs, things like that should load in here. That's a cancellation notice, not the most exciting, but there it is <laughs> forever. Um, so we do plan to maintain these um, permanently as well. Right now, the link is set up a little bit, um, a little bit oddly on your site. It's just sort of linked as an archive. Um, once the agency page migration is complete, again, within the next two weeks or so, you will have um, a more consistent presentation on your site. This just, it's a link to the agency archive. Mm -hmm. Going back up a little bit, I'll show you the about page. This has the information that was on your previous site about your commission, and I, I think I, I tinkered with it a little bit to try and bring the reading level down slightly and also reorganized it a little um, just to make it closer to that fifth grade reading level. I don't think it's all the way there, but it's it's pretty good. <laughs> um, and this is all, of course, editable. You can make changes anytime you want. And then these are the resource pages that are linked from this page, and they hold all of your all of your key documents. And these are all PDF files that are uploaded here. So that's where all of your files are organized now. Mm -hmm. okay, going back to the meeting page, and we'll look at how a meeting is set up. I can show you actually the meeting. Yes, yeah, so this is actually today's meeting, this is just today's in a meeting. different format. And this is how I've been following along <laughs> with today's meeting. So um, you can have at the top, you have the title and then the date and time. On the right, there's this sidebar that shows date and time and then the location. And it also has the information on how to join the meeting. There's a nice clear button to log in. And then oh, there's the right. phone number with the access code. That's really nice. That's yeah. great. <laughs> and then um, the agenda, you would do have the option to just upload a PDF of the agenda, but the the process that we recommend is um, adding it in these stepped out numbers so that people following along on a mobile device will be able to see all of the steps. And you can scroll through. You can add the um, the documents for each of the agenda items to that directly to that item so people can see it as they go along through. This is actually how I've been following the meeting as I've been sitting in the audience. And this was actually pretty quick compared to the other system and a lot right. easier too. At the bottom of the meeting, there are these, um, we call these accordions, um, and these are collapsible fields where you can have all the, um, the required information for your meetings. Um, it will not give you a nice script to read from at the beginning of a meeting. I was noticing that. Um, but you will have all of the required information in here, and it's not getting in the way of people who are just looking for what's the first agenda item, what, what are we going to talk about at this. Um, and then I see the, oh, the commission packet information is here, Ascension ordinance, yeah. all of those things are right here at the bottom. And that's repeatable for each meeting that you set up. Once the meeting is over, there's also a place actually down here around the, this accordion area. Um, I noticed that you do your, you do your meeting recordings on YouTube and we can actually embed a YouTube video right on this page awesome. for the meeting recording. And then the last thing I'll show you is that right on your past meetings page, you can use a filter to find the meeting you're looking for. And you'll notice that there are not a lot of past meetings here because there weren't very many moved over. People using the filters will also notice that and they'll say, how do I see these meetings? They will find this link here that says see archive meetings before this month and it takes them straight into the archive. Okay, and then I can show you a quick sneak peek at the agency page. 
this is the page for the San Francisco Penguin Commission doing very important work out there. Um, you'll be able to add things like an alert banner. Um, this is how we've set up an announcement for a vacant seat on the commission. We've added, this is called a spotlight. That's not important for right now. But um, this link actually goes straight to uh, a transaction that's on the mayor's office page that is uh, where it guides you through submitting your name for a mayoral appointment to a commission. So it just directs straight to there. You'll also be able to add links up here if you want to direct people specifically to some other important information. And then the rest of the page, there are some additional options that you have, but it looks, uh, it looks similar to how it was before. I mentioned the archive link would look different at the bottom. This is how it's going to look once the page converts. It'll say archive website, and then there's a link. Quick tour. Can you show the people too on that version? Is it? The which one? The um, how the link works? Yeah. The, the people. The, uh, oh, just... the people. Yes. So these are it's the same profiles or the same basic profile setup, but these do have a little bit more detail in them. I will show you Clarissa Bubbles, who works in the fishing industry. Um, oh, she doesn't have much of a bio on here, hmm. but she has her picture there. I think some of these other people have more information added. Yeah, this person has a full bio added. You can do that. These things are these are never required, uh, but you do have the option if you would like to add more information. Yeah, it's a nice way to personalize your page and make yourselves um, a little bit more approachable for people who might be following along. Just ask one. Yeah, Commissioner Parker. Um, this looks so awesome. This looks so much, so easy to navigate compared to um, a lot of current pages. Um, I'm assuming this is happening, but I'll just ask anyway. I see you're um, with the accessibility priority. You're using the most current WCAG standards, right? So screen readers can use these sites and yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. We do um, commissions in particular, but not only commissions tend to use a lot of PDFs, and so we do um, we do kind of. Caution people about PDFs. Sometimes you just have to use them. Yeah. Um, meeting minutes, agendas. There's often there's a PDF version, and you might make a page version. Uh, but we do tell people that PDFs are often are very difficult with screen readers, yeah. and so we will always work with you to find a way to make a PDF into a page on SF.gov. That's the way we prefer to do it. Um, it's much much easier for a screen reader to navigate an HTML page than it is for a screen reader to read a PDF, even if the PDF is an accessible one. There are ways to make your PDFs more accessible too, and we'd be happy to talk to you about those if you're interested. Wonderful. But yes, that is that is tricky. Okay. <laughs> site. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of add to what you're saying, so basically all of our existing content is still accessible via the archive. But we can add anything on to the new site that we want to if we want to make it, you know, bring it over. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not sure if I. Sorry, this is um, Commissioner Stone. I um, just wanted to ask, and apologies if you did show us this, um, but just all. I think it would be great to have organized some and. Not necessarily, I don't know who would be responsible for this mm -hmm. of digital services versus our staff. Um, but um, I would love to be able to have things organized around our annual, the president's annual reports um, accessible so that, for example, when we have new commissioners, people can read the, you know, the last 20 years of annual reports to know what the commission has worked on over the last 20 plus years. Um, and yeah, I think things along those lines would be really valuable. So it's easily accessible. Um, and I think we can all agree it's not accessible now. So um, I don't know if that's already on there, but uh, if it's not, I, I would love to request that be included. Um, yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked about that specifically, but we could definitely help with that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so. Um... Are there any other questions for Amy? So basically the plan um, was for the switch over to happen within the next couple of weeks. And um, I mean, this would be under President Stone, um, but I think that, I think 
any commissioner could get trained on using the website. And I think the commission would be free to, you know, I know we've talked about things like adding to topic pages on things like redistricting or racial equity or, or whatever it was that we wanted to, to cover. Oh, but you're, yeah, so continue. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no problem. This is, this is almost done. I was just going to say, uh, Department of Elections site, as we said, has it, uh, begun moving. Um, we're anticipating, fingers crossed, a launch around early May, um, and that's to free up staff time before the next round of election work begins. And right now they're working with digital services on user research and content development. And that's it. It's so nice to meet you all. Um, I spend a lot of time with computers, so I'm really happy to get to see your faces. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Anything you. else, feel free to reach out. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again, Amy. Yes. So let's um, open it up to public comment on this item. There is no. Uh, sorry, there are no hands raised. Okay, so um, was there anything else people wanted to talk about on this before we move on to the next item? Okay, seeing none. So I I neglected to mention earlier in the meeting that it, I wrote it at the top of the agenda, but um, our goal was to complete by nine tonight, and then to to basically have an overflow meeting, you know, that we can decide to have, which is already reserved. For the 31st, so let's move on to, so we've got 50 minutes left. Hopefully we can, you know, get it all done. Get it all done. Yeah. Except so, the yeah, so let's move on to agenda item number 8 process to conduct annual performance evaluation of director of elections discussion and possible action regarding the process to conduct the annual performance evaluation of the director of elections. Okay, so for this item, um, I basically attached the. The form that we've been using for the past several years, it's it's kind of been reformatted a couple of times. But I thought I would just describe to you the process that we've used for the those years. And I know Commissioner Bernholtz was also a participant, so um, she can chime in as well. But basically, um, we have this a form that has different categories and then has a score for each category and then an overall score. And um, the way we've done it is, you know, Director Director Arntz would fill out the form as a self-evaluation, and then each of us as individual commissioners would fill out our own evaluations of him. And then the commission would, after we've completed the evaluations, the commission would meet together in closed session where we would share in advance of the meeting all of our, you know, the evaluations we filled out together and then together with the director's self evaluation. And then we would discuss that as a group. And then we would, um, you know, it, it could potentially take more than one meeting. We've, we've had. Years where it was only 1 meeting in close session year. We've had years where it was like 3 meetings. But then basically the goal would be to come up with a collective evaluation, you know, based on everyone's feedback. And then we would, um. And then that's provided to the director. Um, going back a little bit further, we've we've done we've tried other things like we've invited um, employees of the department, a couple of employees where we would interview them in closed session just to learn more about the department. We had stopped doing that. Um, we I think we did it two or three times, and then we we stopped doing that. But but um, I mean. Theoretically, we could have any kind of process we want, but but the simplest process has been, you know, what I described to you, where we would, you know, fill out this form and then we would meet. I, I guess I'm guessing it would be the next during the next month. Um, does that make sense to people? Um, you know, just open it up to discussion. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the. Um, First process that you described where director Arntz completes his evaluation and that the rest of us complete our evaluations and then we come together at the next meeting and review that. Second. Okay, sounds great. Okay. 
for your next uh, scheduled meeting. Our next scheduled meeting, is that okay? Will we be meeting the appropriate timeline or will we be, is or are we somehow not fulfilling our obligation? Well, I, th I think what DC for us is getting at is that we, we have a potential meeting on the 31st, but also we have a regular meeting in February. So. Okay, I would say that it's 815 and we're doing really well on this. I'm hoping that we would be meeting in February. I second that specific motion. Okay. Um, all right. So, are there any? Is there any discussion of that before, before we move on to public comment? Or Commissioner uh, Dye. So, so Director Arns has not had a chance to fill do a self evaluation yet. Right. Unless unless he's been working on it on his own, but yes, I, I don't he imagine he would. Yeah. No. I just oh. wanted to make sure that he has actual time to do this. Yeah. Well, let's. This is a good time to ask about that. Yeah. So I know that you have a budget coming up and everything. Assuming we approve this process this time, will you have time to do your self evaluation by the next regular meeting? Yeah, I can get something to you. Um, I mean, more time would be good. But uh, if, the, if that's the timeline that we need to hit, then we can hit it. Okay. So. Can I suggest an amendment to the motion? Um, sure, Vice President Stone. So uh, I then suggest that perhaps we provide the director additional time as needed. And if that is submitting by the next meeting for us to review and then have a separate, or sorry, our own um, evaluation um, uh, in March, I guess the question is, would the direct, sorry, this is an amendment to the motion that's now becoming a discussion. I apologize. Um, my, um, well, it, I know, I think what I'm trying to get at is, he, you know, he had said extra time, would that be seven days prior to our February 7th or February 15th meeting or, um, would it be better to have until the February meeting? And then we wouldn't really, you know, we would basically we would have seven days to review it or is the additional week needed so that that's the deadline that we then, you know, discuss in March. So I guess that question is back to the director. Usually I provide it when requested. So. <laughs> would it be helpful to have like, in terms of needing more time or wanting more time, seven days prior to February 15th is very soon. So is that sufficient time or would it be yeah, preferred? I could, I could write something up. Okay, okay then. then I maintain my motion, my second. Mr. Hayden Crowley. I would just say you have a full record of everything you've done with these uh, monthly meeting things. I, I, I don't think this is gonna be re reinventing the wheel, just a comment. Wouldn't be too much of a heavy lift. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I ask you, Parker? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I don't know what's common for other directors of departments. I mean, becoming more common in a lot of other workspaces are these 360 evaluations. And you said in the past there's been, you've perhaps interviewed um, staff members, but clearly you are our only employee, you know, as a commission. And the kind of environment that a director is creating in their own a space, you know, where they're managing their own staff ma matters, right? And how their staff sees. And so I'm just curious what maybe some of the practices, if any of you know, of other um, directors of departments in the city, how that has worked um, and ways that we can gather feedback that we are not privy to as commissioners. You know, we don't work for him. We don't have that experience every day. And I do think that experience matters. And is there some best practice on how to do that for a commission overseeing a director? Uh, from, from what I understand, the department heads report to the mayor. So I, I would assume that the, that most department heads do. I mean, this is an unusual situation because we because this position and the whole interaction and the way we were are appointed was created by a charter amendment. Um, so the mayor and the mayor staff, would, I would assume, would be the ones that would evaluate that. But any kind of like fee employee feedback and things like that when there are issues that goes in front of civil service that's all public record as well as dhr any kind of issues that come up go through uh, dhr and um are a matter of record i don't know if they're publicly available per se but it, um uh i i that's a that's a question that you can 
you know, I mean, th th we couldn't release things to the public. I don't know what, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if they would be available to this commission in detail, if they would have to be redacted. I just don't know the answer to that. But that is how, um, you know, department heads evaluate their employees. And I assume that the, um, I, oh, and the, although the electeds, like I'm looking at the DCA, um, are, uh, she's evaluated by her elected, correct? Or your supervisor, yeah. So that's how it goes. Commissioner Lulosi. Yes, I just want a point of clarification for your question. Was your question um, about actually having us having access to employees under Director Arntz and what the environment is like from their perspective? Um, Perhaps it's just okay. it's more of a um, there there are certainly deliverables that we ask for right mm -hmm. um, of the director and there's sort of the output that we're evaluating as a commission and that is critically important and how the um, you know what other metrics can be used to say that this is this is going well or not so not even just issues that people might have but there might be very positive feedback right. but it's good for us here because we just don't have access to that information right. I just am wondering curious how that kind of information could be shared with us as we do an evaluation, or is that actually not as appropriate because we should only be evaluating okay. on the specific metrics we have as a commission and have already set out and goals for the director? Got it. Thank you. Commissioner Dye? Yeah, so uh, so I was going to make a similar comment in the private sector, 360 degrees degree reviews are pretty common. Yeah. Um, and there are, I don't know what the practice has been in the city. Um, with other oversight commissions, for example, but, you know, we've gotten some feedback uh, in the last few months from John's direct reports, and I'm sure that all of us can take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Another thought and a method that has been used in a lot of the companies that I have worked with or advised is to set up an anonymous Gmail account that you make mm -hmm. available to employees of the department if they want to, and you give them some structure because you don't want people just to say whatever, but mm -hmm. And um, you give them the opportunity to log in and and share their feedback, um, and it's something that you know allows them to retain anonymity, but only employees have access to it. So mm -hmm. we know there's not random people, you know, putting some stuff. So I mean, these are some things we could consider. Um, on the other hand. I'm not a fan of dragging this out for, for months because okay. it's supposed to be an annual review and it should be, you know, good review should be prompt, right? Mm -hmm. And so the 12 months have finished. So, um, but, you know, same thought. So I don't know if there are standard ways. I don't know if that's a question we can ask the HR on how to get uh, employee feedback. Commissioner Hayden Crow, and then I'm going to comment after you. Yeah, I, I, I do think, again, um, there are rules around all of that. And um, particularly, as I said before, this is a highly unionized workforce. Um, even uh, Director Arts, I believe, is a member of MEA, correct? Right. So he's in his union. And um, so we have to, whatever we do, we have to tread very lightly or we'll all be in front of the Civil Service Commission and my husband will have to recuse himself because he can't judge on me. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just would say that, you know, um, there are just rules around everything in city government. Right, uh, d d <laughs> city attorney? <laughs> Aren't there rules around everything with, with the employees and so forth? Yeah, I think that the process that um, you used last time and that was used the time before is the same one and it's been vetted. I think that in the interest of time, maybe using that process is the safest uh, way to go. If you'd like other processes vetted um, by the city attorney's office, we can do that, but it's not going to be um, on February 15th. I, I guess my point was, is I was just saying that because you were talking about getting feedback from employees, I just said there's rules around everything in the city government and that we would have to tread very lightly because uh, we would have to make sure that we were um, com complying with all uh, with the rules as set forth by DHR, as set forth by civil service and so forth. And we don't even know what those rules are. We have a very, we have a unique position in this government. 
process because we were created by a charter. We are an island unto ourselves. So I don't even know if the rules exist for us. Well, it doesn't appear that way. So anyway. Yes. yes. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to comment, Commissioner Perger. I think you make a great point because this is a topic that's come up a lot in past years. I know I, today I was counting back in 2018. We had we I, we had seven, I think, consecutive meetings where we were trying to kind of reevaluate our process of doing the evaluation, and because people had expressed interest in things like. You know, can we do an anonymous survey and, you know, can we have set goals the 1 year and then we evaluate him the next year against those goals, you know, use metrics and people reference the 360 review. Unfortunately, after that process, we, we didn't really wind up changing. For whatever reason, our process, but it was definitely something we. We invested a lot of time in, but um, I think it would be worth doing that, you know. But it, I think it would take take some time to come up with something new. But. Um, thank you for all of that. And uh, you know, maybe it's something that we could think about for next year. It sounds like the timeline is perhaps too short to consider something a devi you know deviating from standard process. So mm -hmm. thanks for the conversation. Yeah, I, I just have Commissioner a quick question. Wilson. Thank you. You said earlier that that, that in the past we did um, interview. Or speak to employees. Was there a specific reason why that stopped? Yeah, I think it was because um, I think there was a sense among. I'm not going to say it was universal, but I think some commissioners felt that it was an uncomfortable situation okay. because they were being, you know, just the environment. So we wanted to see is there another way we can solicit feedback. Mm -hmm. Was it a closed meeting? Yeah. Okay. Closed meeting. There, there is also there is. I, and I apologize, I did miss some element of this conversation. So, um, uh, for a moment, so you may have already said this. Um, I think you may have been saying that, but I do know that there are specific rules around how we interact with the department, and mm -hmm. we really should be interacting with simply the director. And so, I imagine I wasn't on the commission when that happened, but I imagine that that was part of it. And I wonder if in the future, um, as Commissioner Parker mentioned, um, we could find a way that isn't violating those rules, um, but I do know that that is like a pretty, like I think it's outlined it's in, in our bylaws. Yeah, so I don't know if that helps um, add any context. Yeah, and I mean before we had we had had our process vetted too, so we weren't breaking okay. rules back then. But thank you. Okay, so um, let's take a public comment on this item, and we do have a motion on the. Floor as well. Um, there is one public commenter, and Mr. Turner, I have unmuted you. You have three minutes. Uh, thank you, and uh, again, uh, congratulations to the commission for moving forward here. Uh, I, I appreciate the uh, daunting nature of this task at hand, and it is fairly awkward. Um, even for myself, as we try to walk a fine line here and make sure that no one is inspired in any strange or unusual way, because no one is saying that uh, Director Ernst is not functional or that he is a bad person in some way. He's, um, in our opinion, uh, those that advocate for better systems, he's uh, another victim of, of, of bad technology that's occurring. Um, that being said, uh, he has been less than forthright um, with this commission uh, and uh, the folks at California Clean Money uh, did not take lightly the letter that they published um, and, and gave to the commission that uh, had a list of indiscretions and transgressions by the director. Um, it does not please me to say this and, and uh, the articles that have come out in the examiner that complain of the relationship between uh, Mr. Arnst and the current vendor uh, sales rep, Steve Bennett, um, you know, are, have been noted. So, uh, you know, we've been hoping that uh, Mr. Arnst move forward with the Secretary of State and the pilot for open source, but I, I don't think he's going to do that under any circumstance and it smacks of, of a problem that needs to be, um, it, it, need, it needs to be just openly uh, discussed. 
So for those reasons, I hope you do your duty. I know it is uh, unfortunate and awkward as volunteers, um, but I would look to that letter uh, presented by the folks at California Clean Money. They they do great work, and the you know we we're this is a nonpartisan issue, but this is different than most places because of course we're we're a lot of us staunch Democrats trying to work on this issue. It's not the same as somebody mentioned about. Uh, other territories where you have Republicans going after Democrats, this is the reverse. So thank you again for your time. Thank you. We have no other public commenters. Okay. So are there any, um, any other discussion? Are people clear on what the motion was? Okay. So let's uh, take a vote on the motion. Pull up the, um, List here, if I can find it. Were you looking for the motion? No, I'm looking for the list of names. Yeah, it's just easier oh. for me. Fair. Do you want to restate, well, just, you restate the motion? Do you restate the motion? Well, would you mind? It was your, your oh, motion. I'm sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Did you want to restate it? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. Um, I restate the motion, which is that we I move to accept the process as outlined by President Jordanic at the beginning of this conversation, where Director Arns completes the performance plan appraisal report at, um, and shares that with us seven days prior to our next meeting, which is February 15th, and that each member of the commission um, do its best to. Uh, complete the department head strategic plan and performance plan appraisal report. I just say that do its best knowing that some of us are fairly new to the commission. So it will make it a little bit interesting to uh, complete the performance appraisal. Um, but anyway, I know that we can do it. So um, that's the motion. And I believe it was seconded by uh, vice president stone. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So everyone's clear on that. Okay. So, um, this up here. Okay. I, I, sorry. No, it's okay. And the list is there if you want it. Okay, uh, Vice President Stone. Yes. Commissioner Bernholtz. Yes. Commissioner Dye. Aye. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Yes. Commissioner Lavolsi. Yes. Commissioner Parker. Yes. And I, President Trudonic, vote yes. Okay, the motion passes unanimously. Okay, so. I will circulate the form. I think the date needs the year needs to be updated on that. I'm not sure I have access to the original document, but maybe someone can with Acrobat can modify it. And then also for people that are newer on the commission, you know, you do your best with the evaluation and we can also share information at the next meeting. As well, yes, Commissioner Dye. Um, I would think Commissioner uh, Parker would be exempt since she was not a commissioner during the period of the evaluation. Um, I, well, I think it's really up to, I mean, up to Commissioner Parker as to whether she wants to fill it out. I mean, no one's obligated to, but um, it's. We also don't have to put her on the spot right now, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't. Do you see as far as did you want to respond to that or? No, she, I mean, I think it's not a requirement that you guys complete the evaluation, um, but she, you do have to participate. If you come to the meeting, you have to take a vote as required by the charter. Or, or ask the commission to excuse you from voting, uh, in, in which case they would all vote to excuse you. And if you're excused, then you don't have to vote. But for the most part, everyone that's here has to take a vote unless they are asked to be excused. Okay, um, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Do we need to? Do we have a day, date that we need to complete this by? Do we? Should we all have it in and give what, it to you? What's the process? Yeah. So, send it to me. Um, I would say the, the date that Director Arnes' deadline okay. would be our deadline as well. Okay. And then um, would you be sending it to President Elect Stone? Good point. Yeah. So, um, good point. Okay. The president and. A good, so, as far as, you know, the, when we send something like this electronically, we just send it to commissioner stone and then is the, is there an issue for sunshine at all on something like this? 
I think maybe for the time being, um, you know, we we our office is, provides legal advice to you, and this is not legal advice per se. But um, since you have no secretary, maybe just to make things simpler, just send these things to me for okay. me, and you can CC um, DCA Brad Russi. But otherwise, let's just make it simpler in that aspect. Okay, and then we'll I'm sure President Stone doesn't mind. And then, and then we'll have attorney-client privilege. Um, well, these things have clo like these things per um, state law when you're evaluating an employee, uh, okay. like they're not public materials. Okay, so anything else? Okay, so let's move on to the next item, agenda item number nine. Possible closed session regarding public employee appointment hiring director of elections. Discussion and possible action regarding appointing the incumbent director to an additional five-year term. The director of elections current five-year term expires at 12 a.m. on May 21st, 2023. The charter requires that the commission appoint a director for the next term at least 30 days before the expiration of the current term. SF Charter 13104. Portions of this item may be held in closed session pursuant to California Government Code 54957B and San Francisco, San Francisco Administrative Code 6710. Okay, so let's start with A, public comment on all matters participating to this agenda item, including any comment pertaining to the Director of Elections appointment and or whether to meet in closed session. We have one public commenter. Mr. Turner, I've unmuted you. You have three minutes. Yes, thank you again. Very briefly, if the um, commission is going to interview employees of the election department, um, it would sound like a good idea to do that anonymously. Um, there is obviously intense political pressure surrounding this particular issue and a climate that uh, I think demands anonymity for anyone that w does want to speak their mind, although that isn't expected. So thank you. Thank you. There are no other commenters. Okay, public comment is closed. So let's, um, I guess we need a motion to move into closed session. If someone would like to make such a motion. I don't think we need to move into closed session. I think this is pretty cut and dried. I, I You have to. Oh, we do? Yes. We can't just vote. Yes. yes. Make a motion and vote. Okay. I move we go into closed session. Okay. A second. Second. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Dye and seconded by Commissioner Lavosi. Okay. Any commissioner discussion of the motion? Okay. Seeing none. So, um, Commissioner Hayden Crowley. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to go in. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, what do we do? With yes. You okay. don't have the agenda. <laughs> no, I do have the agenda. No, no. He wants the list. <laughs> so we're we're voting on the motion now. To move uh, move into closed session. Yes. So actually, I'm going to go back to the original order. So I was uh, Vice President Stone. No. No. Commissioner Bernholtz. Oh uh, yes. Commissioner Dye. Aye. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Yes. Commissioner Lavolsi. Yes. Commissioner Parker. Yes. And I, President Jordanic, vote yes. The mo motion passes. Was it six to one? Yes. Okay. With um, Vice President Stone dissenting. Okay, so now we are going to um, move into closed session. So we need to um, clear the room. I'm going to put the, the video into um, practice session, which means the public is not going to be able to hear anything. You guys, um, you have, I mean, you can ask them any questions if. So, um, so let's, so we're going to move into closed session now and I'm going to, um, okay. So, um, the time is now 9 25 PM. We are. Reconvening into open. I'm actually going to wait for Commissioner Dye to return if okay. people don't mind. So
so for members of the public that are listening in, we are just waiting for um, everyone to return. Um, someone took a break. Yeah, it's cold. Last time it was so hot. Last time it was freezing. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> Do you need a scarf or a coat? <laughs> I can text them if you want. No, let's please. I don't think any of this time. No, he doesn't need to come back, yeah. but just do, how do we inform him of this? Let's, I'll send can I, well, president can elect Stone. President elect Stone, why don't you tell him? Are we, are we back live? Okay, so no. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the time is now 926 PM. We are, we have our reconvening into open session. Um, I'm just following letter D here. While in closed session, we voted unanimously to reappoint director Arntz to a, another five year term. And now we proceed proceed to letter E discussion and vote pursuant to sunshine ordinance 6712 a on whether to disclose any portion of the closed session discussion. Would someone like to make a motion? Motion that we do not. I, that we do not disclose any portion of the closed session beyond the vote. Second. Okay. So moved by Vice President Stone, seconded by Commissioner Lavolsi. Is there any discussion of the motion? Okay, seeing none. Um, Vice President Stone. Oh yes. Commissioner Bernholtz. Yes. Commissioner Dye. Aye. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Yes. Commissioner Lavolsi. Yes. Commissioner Parker. Yes. And I, President Jordanic, vote yes as well. Um. Vote. My apologies, DCA Flores. Um, did I miss um, you stating the vote on the record? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was. Seven, it was unanimous. You said it was unanimous, seven zero. Okay. Yeah. So the the motion on to not disclose any portion passed unanimously as well. So, um, and then Vice President Stone. You will, you will inform the director. Happy to. Okay, great. Okay, let's, anything else? So let's move on to, well, actually, um, so that closes agenda item number nine. Um, at the last meeting, we had said that we will not meet past 9 p.m. We've, we're a half hour past that. We have uh, four more items. And to me, that means that we should have an overflow meeting on the 31st. Um, if we're going to respect what we had decided before, but we can talk about it. Um, does Commissioner Hayden Crowley? I believe these are very minor items, so I think that we can finish it, but that's up to the rest of the group. I'm okay continuing, but I don't want to force anyone. Okay. I, Vice I, President Stone? I know I am often the one who feels that we shouldn't go late, um, and so I'm happy to keep um, you know, I'm happy to agree on that. I think perhaps we could just hold ourselves accountable by saying another time. <laughs> so, like by 10 o'clock, we cut, we reevaluate, and if we're still going, we have another conversation about it. Just so we're holding ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that sounds so, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. So we have the aspirational goal of 10 p.m. <laughs> All right. So, item number 10: approval of minutes of previous meetings. I'll skip the description. So I just want to, so as part of the packet, we have two draft minutes. These are the minutes that, two of the minutes that were before the commission at the last meeting, but Commissioner Dye did a wonderful job of revising them to make them more accurate. Um, the meeting, the minutes for the last meeting, I was not able to start, but Vice President Stone graciously volunteered. So um, she's currently working on those. Uh, Commissioner Dye, do you want to say anything about the draft minutes that you prepared? Um, or revised? I uh, tried to make it as accurate as possible. I think there are only a couple of minor typos at this point. I would move to approve both the September 21st and October 19th uh, minutes. Second. Okay. As fast as possible. So let's take public comment on this item. I see no hands. Okay. Public comment is closed. So any 
discussion before we take a vote. Can I just ask a clarifying question? Sure. Since I did not attend those meetings, should I vote? Yes. Yeah, this yes. comes up. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you should. <laughs> required to. Okay. Yeah, There's some problem. history there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, there is. <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you need my Okay, um, Vice President Stone. Yes. Commissioner Bernholz. Yes. Commissioner Dye. Aye. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Yes. Commissioner Lavolsi. Yes. Commissioner Parker. Yes. And I, President Trudonic, vote yes. Motion passes unanimously. You know what? I, I'm my apologies to see first. I'd like to clarify that you could have asked to be recused um, because you weren't there, but that would have taken a vote by the commission to. To, recuse, allow to, to allow you to recuse yourself. So the easier choice is just to vote. <laughs> okay. Trusting that everybody reviewed accurately. Twice. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's move on to agenda item number 11, commissioner's reports. Okay. So for this item, um, well, why don't I turn it over to Vice President Stone? You can give us an update on the Elections Commission Secretary position. Yeah, I'll make this super fast. Um, Basically, we opened the position based on what I shared um, in our previous meeting, and we had zero applicants. Um, so oh. I have <laughs> I have worked, hence why we don't have a secretary today. Um, I've been working with uh, DHR on um, on uh, getting. Um, sorry, we now have it reposted, as you can see. Uh, the additional piece. There are two additional updates that I want to share. One is that. Uh, Commissioner Hayden Crowley provided some really phenomenal feedback about the um, job description to help make it a little bit more enticing. Um, and I, I, I have been working to incorporate that feedback, so hopefully that can help. Um, and the other big thing that I wanted to share is um, I've been in conversation with the director about um, potentially what process we could go down to have a, um, a classification change for the secretary so that we could have a secretary either you know full time or at a higher um, uh, experience level to be able to provide us more robust um, support on the commission, um, and I think that uh, basically it's just going to require a little bit of um, bureaucratic maneuvering. Um, and I am glad to have the director support and um, helping me work through that, and also. Um, DHR because there are several steps. I cannot promise that it will happen um, because it will require additional funding. And as mm -hmm. we discussed earlier, the city is in a serious budget crisis. So um, I do believe we have a strong case. I don't believe that the amount of money is really going to fix the six hundred million dollars kind of shortfall. Um, but you know, I I, I just want to set the right expectations. So both parallel paths. One is trying to um, increase the, the, um, to, uh, I told you I'm not good late at night, um, to go at a higher classification level. And the other path is, um, continuing to try and make the existing classification level and job posting more enticing to really qualified candidates. Commissioner Hayden Crowley. Um, thank you. Um, vice president stone. Uh, we had this discussion yesterday, but I'm just going to bring it up. Um, commissioner Parker. One of the things that we talked about was that this could potentially be in uh, um, is, is the way that it's the position is structured right now. It's a part time position 20 hours um, 1 night a week and there's some questions like would a person get overtime if they have to work more than 20 hours. So, some things have, like that have to be resolved, but it's a mostly remote position except for when they come here. And I think it's actually a great position for a, for a parent and with your context. Is there a possibility that we could you have a, a, a list serve or something where you could post it for absolutely? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we'll leave that to yeah, when it's updated. Send it to me. I'm happy to yeah. send it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, awesome. I think we should just post it as many places as possible. I don't know. We should assume who's best for the position. Um, there are many different types of people who have different lifestyles and um, people who may want a second job. Um, so let's just post it as many places as possible. Yes, agreed. Um, thank you for all of that. Uh, actually, one of the things I realized after consulting with um, Commissioner Hayden Crowley is that we I actually want more transparency into the lists where it's been sh being shared. Um, and at this stage, I, I don't have that. And so that is 
Um, uh, one of the things that I have, um, based on our conversation, I realized I want more transparency into. Um, and so we can evaluate where is it going. Another amazing suggestion um, was uh, because the department has a very ro robust um, listserv of, you know, poll workers who yep. work part time, we should be tapping into that. Um, Absolutely. So I think and it was a great recommendation. So um, I think all of these things are, are really valid. And if you have other ideas, I, I welcome them um, either in email or text or um, whatever. Yes, I would just say anybody here who has access to a listserv because, you know, with people that are interested in jobs, let's get it out. Yeah. yeah. Because it's a it's a too, too much of a tiny universe here. Yeah, I agree. I have a question. So the job posting, it says it was posted on January 10th and you're accepting applications or we're accepting applications until January 20th, which is Friday. Yeah, it's gonna, I'm, one of the things I have to do, which you had asked me to do offline. So I'm happy to answer it in public, okay. which is that we will extend the. Yeah, could we okay. extend it for like, like two more weeks maybe? I mean, sure. okay. Just to give people time. I mean, I think we, we're gonna have to, right? Like, yeah. He, he, I think we have no <laughs> choice. <laughs> yeah. we, we need a secretary. And then, yeah. and then, and then you're gonna revise the posting you said like, yeah i think we're gonna yes okay. uh we'll keep it currently posted but we'll work on making updates while it is posted okay. because i think they don't those two things don't go in conflict with each other Let's see. commissioner die yeah i have a question so does since it is a half-time position does it qualify for benefits yeah it does it's not in there she's gonna add so, yeah. yeah that oh, definitely needs huge. to be added because we, yeah did he say that DHR guy? I didn't hear that. Oh, the only reason I know this is because uh, I was looking at possibly coming back at half time. Can you get him? Oh, I was looking at possibly coming back and I looked and it said that when you work 20 hours, you get benefits, but it should be confirmed. That is, yeah, that's fabulous. City yeah. benefits are fabulous. And yeah. so I think, yeah, if we get it out more places, we have the opportunity to track someone who is interested in the work that we do, we do and mm -hmm could really make a big contribution and only do it in 20 hours a week. That's pretty. The, pretty also, annoying. DHR has job fairs. I know I mean, they've got one coming up in February. I'm so. sure that it's yeah. included in that. That's why I want the list because I don't know all the places. Yeah, they've got one going on. I, I know at the um, Botanical Garden or whatever it is out at Golden Gate Park mm -hmm. in February. Um, these are all great suggestions. In the interest of time, if you have other questions or thoughts, just shoot them over via email. Um, because I think this is pretty administrative and I'm happy to take yeah. it all on. I, actually, just one more important thing that might be worth mentioning is like, so the process will be, you know, you're gonna screen the candidates and then bring back a couple to the commission to interview or? or... Um, well, what we had discussed, um, oh yeah, happy to, happy to share um, as it pertains now, um, given how urgent the need is, um, we had discussed that I would be vetting the candidates and that the officers would interview and potentially hire. If we wanna have um, more um, commission input, um, we can definitely talk about that. I just thought that the priority would be moving as fast as possible, um, given that we've been without a secretary for a long time. But I, I'm, I'm open to if folks feel differently and you wanna have them all come in and present. Um, so I'm glad, thank you for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know if, if that's something, I mean, should we talk about it or just, I, I mean, I just want it to be something that the commission's comfortable with. That's all. But whatever. I'm not preventing well, it. When they come to it. I say, let's move. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's awesome. The one other thought. Um, I think this person will be very involved with building out our new website. And so that might be really attractive to someone to be part of that creation. So maybe. Isn't the website already built? Yeah, you know what? But I, I mean, contact. content yeah, 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 yeah. and design. Can I just say, because I've worked on this system, it's super easy. It really is. Once, once you get the training. It really is. Although uh, the the hard part actually is the, writing the content yes. in fifth grade style, but they have a program to to Help do you. that. Yeah. So, but but I think for a lot of people, this is like a marketable job skill to yeah, say that you right. built out a website, even if you didn't do the engineering. But you know, the point is that you were the webmaster, and so I think that's an attractive thing. Yeah. Happy to add it. 
Thank you all for no, your feedback. Okay. Um, also, if if <clears throat> let's say we do move forward, you know, if anyone does have concerns about it being that process that we just described, please also feel free to share like what your criteria would be to make sure that you, um, you know, for example, I imagine there might be some insight from Commissioner Volsi from a DEI perspective in the work that you do. Um, and uh, I, I welcome that. Thank you. Okay, so are there any other um, reports under number 11? So let's open it up to public comment on this item. Just double checking. There are no hands up. Okay, great. So close public comment. Let's move on to item number 12, Elections Commission section of the Department of Elections Racial Equity Action Plan and Progress Report. Okay, this is an item that I, I discussed briefly at the last meeting. And basically, um, a reporter had reached out to, I believe, all commissioners independently. Um, they had found a document on the Department of Elections website that was the department's, basically their progress report on racial equity. And that document was a large spreadsheet, something like 60 pages. And the, um, the section on the commission was basically, it looked like the commission had made no progress on the racial equity goals that we had established back in December 2020. So it, it looks like the document was posted without um, basically reflecting any of the work that the commission had done. So I thought we could um, discuss, I mean, I don't think we're gonna do it today, but the, so the idea was that we would discuss whether and how we should update this document so that it, it accurately reflects um, you know, the work that the commission has been doing so far. So I was working on a memo that sort of was sort of just laid out the history of this document and how it came to be and, and how it was updated. And, um, and then also like some of the progress we've made. And I did not finish that document. Um, Vice President Stone has been um, working with me on that document. So that's something that, um, we're going to continue working on together and bring back at a future meeting. Um, Vice President Sun, did you have anything you want to say? No, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you. But I did include the um, basically the the different parts of the document that was posted online, so you can see what the reporter was looking at, and compared to the original version that we had seen in December 2020. Yes, Commissioner Parker. Um, sorry, I'm looking. I know that I saw that, but I'm looking on the packet page on the website and I'm not seeing it. Can you direct me where to find it? Because it's I just refreshed it. It's not showing up, but I, I swear I looked at it earlier. So oh, that's weird. you know it's a it's a it's a caching should just try putting a question mark after the URL and then it's okay. it's a quirk. Just manually typing a question mark. Yeah because I didn't see it. Yeah. Um no it's not showing well, up. That's weird. That's too bad. I saw it before. We might yeah. even have a printed uh, version because I know John made some copies. John made a copy. There yeah. yeah. a printed version. Well, I think. Okay. Yeah, there's I one. There's a, oh, you right do? Here. Oh, what is yeah. It? yeah. 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 Wait, wait a minute. What is that? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I think up here. Um, I, I did that and then I added the question mark. Oh, thank John you. President Jordanic, I have a quick yeah. question about this. Just. Um, so, so the Department of Elections posted this on their website. They all the departments have to do this, right? And there's this piece where the commission and he left it blank. So, I, and my question is, is who's doing this for him? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, is he doing this, or does well, he have somebody that works for him that does all this? Well, so go ahead. I know the answer. So there's well, there's the commission part of it, which. Was well, based we have to do, but I'm who's doing his part? Like who? The reason I ask this question is because whoever it is, whoever it is, it should have contacted us. Yeah. So, my the memo that I was drafting was going to lay out, you know, the interactions that we've had around these documents. Okay. But um, unfortunately, Director Ernst isn't here today. But I know the answer to the question. Do you know what I'm going to ask? No, I know the answer oh. to her question. Oh, go ahead. Um, which is that he, the department has their own racial equity team. Yeah. 
and yeah. they they input all yeah. of that stuff. Okay, so they so Sorry, they, I, so I they I probably realize. didn't even so because well, I've done this. I did this with the sheriffs. I did this exact same thing. So yeah, and we have a we had a racial equity team that did it. All I did was edit it. That was it. But anyway, I I guess going forward, we just gotta improve communication. That's that, that's a big thing. I cut yeah. you off. Why don't you finish? So well, it's not. It's not the information is not here today because the memo is not finished, but we did have meetings where we actually talked about what to. You know, the information to provide, but I think some of the. Steps might have gotten missing, but, but basically, I think what we can talk about at a future meeting is. You know, are we able to update this document? And if so. What would we like it to say? And maybe we can even modify our goals. You know, to have a better discussion. Than we had before. So, um, but that's kind of like the nutshell version of of this topic. And um, Commissioner Dye. Yeah, I, I wonder if we can refer this to BOPEC to dig into the details because, you know, that was the la the last BOPEC meeting we talked yeah. about DEI substantially. So I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So great. Yeah. Well, Vice President Stone. I, I just wanted to respond to that. So the I think what I was thinking about um, in the context of the document that uh, President Jordanic and I have been working on is um, that that could be a resource for a subcommittee um, because basically, um, you know, President Jordanic has a history before I was on the commission. I know that when I joined the commission, I running up like every single meeting um and i think that we didn't necessarily know where like where we even fit in in this document um and i think like i said like president jordanic is working on or has already basically drafted that whole process but i think with that foundation of here's the history of that here's where it stood in the last year here's what we have accomplished even though, like, in spite of not knowing about this document, what we still achieved on our own proactively because it was important to us. Um, and so I think what I hope for is to be able to have that all drafted and then share it off to a committee and say, here's the context, you know, maybe now we have room for real goals. Because I think BOPEC was really focused on what should our goals be? <laughs> What's important to us? And um, I hadn't even seen this document until the reporter reached out to be honest with you right. um i didn't even know this document existed if you look back on the packet from bopec because i was um i think i was um like i think it was my agenda item or whatever um you'll see what i did know existed and it wasn't this um i read the whole um like mayor breed's um uh m initial memo and the city plan and I, a bunch of stuff but i never knew about this and i and in spite of that we had done a lot of work as a commission just because we thought it was important um, and i think that's part of where i think unfortunately some members of the press mischaracterized what actually happened because there's a lot we've done on our own fruition um without even knowing that this document was there so we want to make sure that that whole history is there and also the work we have accomplished is there um do you think that's fair president Jordanic, based on you know one th one thing um and I, i'm gonna make this extremely brief because i really want to hit that 10 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> um well, uh, the last time i asked john he does not have a director of communications so usually the, you know a department will have somebody that handles that and so that you've got that one person to go to and i know that it, it says in our bylaws we should be dealing with john on everything but there has to be somebody else that catches this kind of stuff. I mean, that was kind of my job. And, and so it all, you know, it, usually most departments have somebody that catches this what and mean, would have what said mean, catch? that the commission part was empty and we should go talk to the commission and see what they had, you know, that's all. I mean, it, it fell through the cracks is what I see. Well, and I don't see that as the commission's fault. Well, I see it as that 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 the department put up their thing and didn't bother to contact us. No, sir, we, no, we were contacted. Yeah, we, it, were? we were contacted. Oh well, I stand correct. It's I, I mean, it's a it's a deeper discussion. I, I guess at BOPEC you can 
discuss okay. it, but, but it'll be like a refresher. Just bring everyone up to speed. And then decide how do we want to move forward? Yeah, I think let's do that. Okay. 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 Sorry. So I misread there... that one. <laughs> okay, so let's, um, let's open it up to public comment. Just right now, and then we can. Touch base if there's anything else, but um, any commentary? I just want to double check, refresh it. There are no hands. Okay. So, were there any final thoughts before we move on to the next item? Okay. Great. So, let's move on to agenda item number 13 agenda items for future meetings. All right. Um, I mean, I, I, I'll just mention a couple of things off the top of my head. We have the um, you know, the annual performance evaluation. We have the commission annual report for the last year. I, it's going to take me at least a couple months, so I don't think we should plan on discussing that next month. But, um, budget. Yes, the, the budget review. Redistricting. Yeah, the redistricting. Commission secretary. Commission secretary. Well, is are you um, is this for the 31st meeting or the 15th? We don't have, we're not we gonna have, have a 31st. 31st. We're already. done. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. um, you do need a second meeting for the budget, though. Yeah, I. I am planning to call a BOPEC meeting. I just want to make sure I know who the members will be. And so I will work off on, on that. But I, I had spoken about that earlier in the meeting. I just said that we'll, we'll call BOPEC meeting um, to be 15 minutes. Sorry, yeah. 15 <laughs> days before <laughs> well, thank you. The, fe the February general meeting. And then this, this racial equity thing can be after the BOPEC discusses it, I imagine. Um, any other ideas people have? Okay. So let's open it up to public comment on agenda item number 13. There are no public commenters. Okay, so um, any last ideas? Otherwise, we finish with plenty of time to spare, eight minutes. It's um, 9.52 p.m. That was worth staying late. I seconded. Um, <laughs> the meeting is now adjourned. Have a wonderful rest of the night, everybody.